Welcome to the Ralston Arena as we celebrate the 20th season of your Omaha Beef. Looking deep, lost it for and tops it, and he goes in for the touchdown.
nine lead. They have a 10 point margin in the first quarter and they got that with about 12 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Then all of a sudden the Salina Liberty defense threw a switch and they did not let the beef get in the end zone until 20 seconds left in the game. They got a few field goals to the Omaha beef but the Liberty ran away with that one, and even with that late touchdown, with 20 seconds left to go, it was still a 20-point margin of victory for the Liberty. I don't think anybody in this building right now feels like that's the way this game is going to go. I think it could go either the other way or either way as far as that would go, but I think we're looking for a very competitive, very hard-fought, very physical game tonight between the Omaha Beef and the Salina Liberty. Yeah, we got here a, a, you know, a number of hours before kickoff, and it, it was you know just kind of a laid back feeling but as we got closer and closer to kickoff and right now this really has a playoff atmosphere to it here inside the Ralston Arena. Good crowd here at Ralston Arena. This is a, an arena that I've always said since the day I stepped in the door of this arena. Been coming here for a number of years now. This is an arena that looks like if you would draw up a prototypical arena just for indoor football, this would be it. It's an amazing arena with video boards on both ends. The seating is close to the field, but not right on top of the players. The benches are on the same side, divided by hockey glass. The Liberty on our left side, the Beef on our right side. As you view it on Pluto TV, it's the other way around as you view the Beef logo and the coin toss going on right now at the midfield stripe. But this is a very intimate arena when you pack a few thousand people in here. And we heard over 2,000 people paid for this game. It can be a very loud arena, too. They bring their cowbells. They bring their, from the soccer world, the Vuvuzelas. And they make a lot of noise. Yeah, they do. And, and the thing about this crowd is they appreciate good football and they understand good football. That's why this, this beef organization has been in, in the business as long as they have. And it's... You know, we'll, we'll talk to Ricky Burst, the commissioner, at halftime. See, you know, one thing from him right now is that when this schedule is laid out, if you would have said that the next to the last game of the season would have this playoff implications between these two teams, they could have asked for anything more. That's exactly what we have tonight. It is kind of ironic when the beef have taken as much heat as they have for their strength of schedule this year. And you don't know when you lay that schedule out what team is going to do what. They could have put an expansion team in Oklahoma and Eden, and they could be undefeated right now. Who knows what's going to happen? That's sports. But whoever laid the schedule out looks like a genius at this point in the Northern Division because not only do you have this game here tonight where the Liberty are going to play Omaha and a chance to see who is going to be the top record in the Northern Division when these two teams come out of here tonight. But also, you have the Liberty traveling next week to Albuquerque to play the top team in the South in Duke City. And you also have Sioux City playing Omaha here in this building. So it really is going to be a sudden death type of week next week for all the teams trying to qualify for the playoffs. Yeah, take care of business tonight. Don't have to worry as much about things next week. But I know that, you know, the excitement is there. I'm excited. You're excited. Everybody here is ready to get things going. And we are just about ready for kickoff. There are some other games tonight in Champions Indoor Football. One of them is Sioux City. They're on the road in Enid to play that expansion team, the Oklahoma Flying Aces. Also, the Amarillo Venom coming off their short week. Remember, they played a Monday night game against the Omaha team. They are back on the road. And Amarillo will be in Wichita at Interest Bank Arena to take on the Wichita Force. Omaha comes out, they take the field, a little Raiders type look going on. They have a gray and black fade going on, white numerals with a black helmet, black socks. The Salina Liberty opting for their powder blue road jerseys, along with white pants, white socks, as they look ready to take this opening kickoff from the Omaha Beef as we get ready to kick it off here at Ralston Arena in Omaha. The kickoff will come from a kicker from St. Mary's College, Brian. And you looked up a little bit of data on him. It's Zeke Aravalo, and he is 9 of 22 for field goals, 48 of 57, 84% on extra points on the season. And he will angle this kick over to the left-hand side. It's going to bounce at the 2 and then take a hop over the wall. That is about as good as you can opt for a no-return policy against the Salina Liberty. Salina will come out. They will start the opening drive of this football contest at the 5-yard line. You said that's about as perfect as you get. That kick angled, bounced it about the one, crossed the goal line, then went out of bounds. You can practice that all day long. I don't think your execution could be any better than what that was. Get things going offensively, and it's time to see 
what our man under quarterback can do. And that's Mr. Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson flirting with 2,000 yards on the season. That's third in the league. He has an empty backfield. Four wide receivers. He plinks it out to the right-hand side. It's intended for Daniel McKinney. And McKinney cannot come up with that catch. And on defense, on that play, was defensive back Chris Perry for the Omaha Beat. Along with Andrew Jackson on the field, the league's leading rusher, at Tracy Brooks, 615 yards on the season, 17 touchdowns, and also 298 yards receiving along with five touchdowns through the air. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. McKinney will split out left side. The other two receivers, Smith and Pargo, to the right side. The pitch out is to Brooks. And he will bring it out across the line of scrimmage after he dodged a couple of tacklers in the backfield. And Tracy Brooks will bring it out to the nine-yard line where it will be third down and six after a gain of four. You do you see Tracy Brooks get that ball, and I think we'll see it a lot tonight. It's kind of interesting that they would take that first shot to Daniel McKinney. McKinney, having been at Omaha before, maybe a little bit of butterflies in him tonight in his return to the Ralston Arena. Serena getting louder. Salina will empty the backfield again and stack three wide receivers, including Brooks, to the left-hand side. Third down and six. Jackson back to pass. Twirls the football in his right hand. Now scrambling to the left, and he's going to be sacked for no gain up against the board. Coming in, making the tackle is Robert Kuba, the defensive lineman. Came through, he had a beat on Andrew Jackson. Jackson swallowed the football instead of throwing it downfield where it may have been intercepted. And the Salina Liberty forced to bring on. Looks like they're going to have Jimmy Allen coming on. And Jimmy Allen's birthday also high off of a win just down the street here in downtown Omaha with the College World Series of his Michigan Wolverines. So, so far, Jimmy having a good night, but put in a bad spot here as he is going to have to kick from his own goal line. The snap will come from Kelvin McCoy. Tracy Brooks will be the holder. Back deep for the Omaha Beef is Chris Perry. Here's the kick from Jimmy Allen. He's going to angle it, and it goes horribly out of bounds up into about the seventh row. And now the Omaha Beef will take over after they stop the Salina Liberty here on their defensive end of the field. So Derek Bernard, former Liberty quarterback, will take the field with his offense. He has played six games now here as the Omaha Beef signal caller after a brief stint in San Jose. So far, Derek Bernard has passed for 893 yards, 22 touchdowns against just six interceptions. He also is a threat in the rushing game, 332 yards rushing and seven touchdowns on the ground. And I think, Brian, it's worth mentioning that the leading rusher on this team is not on this team anymore. It's Antonio Bray listed as a refuse to report with 422 yards and 14 touchdowns. Bernard back to pass, once it all, goes deep, has a receiver, and he overthrows him. The receiver wide open in the back of the end zone was Javon Bell, the leading receiver on this team, and Bernard missed him. Yeah, Bell was wide open, and that's going to be one of the concerns a little bit, was a little bit, you know, potential missed coverage. That time, Winston Green was the assigned defensive back, just a few steps behind, luckily, that ball well overthrown. If you missed it in pregame, Salina playing without two of their defensive backs in this contest. We'll go over that. Here's the pitch out to the left-hand side. Calvin Phillips will take it after a little sutter step. Gains two yards on the play. Takes it across the midfield stripe. And it will be third down and eight. Salina tonight playing without not only Isaiah Barfield, who tweaked his leg during the Wichita game on an interception, but also without Frankie Solomon Jr., who's participating in a prior commitment. Basically, it's an all-star type flag football contest for a lot of money. Yeah, NFL sponsored, I believe, down in down in Florida. But uh, we'll definitely look forward to having both those guys hopefully back next week. Henry Harper, Winston Green on the left-hand side of the Salina Liberty defense. Here's Derek Bernard now, tucks it and runs. He's a threat on this all day long, and he's going to look lunch for the end zone. He'll be just a little bit short as he comes up at the one-inch line. Derek Bernard all the way down the field from 23 yards away just missed the chalk at the goal line and it'll be first and goal for Omaha and we saw this a big threat for Omaha against Amarillo Monday night Brian as Derek Bernard really raised his head in the rushing game and did very very well yeah it's one thing we saw a lot last year in Salina you get him if, if his receivers are going to be covered he's not afraid Normally, I would say tuck that ball away. He doesn't like to tuck the ball away, but he will get out of that pocket, go forward. He has a big knack of finding that end zone. 
Bernard and his Omaha beef now stacking it up. They have three running backs in the backfield, including newcomer Darian Miller. They're not going to hand it off to any of them. Bernard's trying to hit on the quarterback keeper, and a touchdown for the beef. It's a four-play drive as Omaha gets into the end zone. And after each team has had their chance at a possession, Omaha leads us six to nothing with the extra point pending. Yeah, that time, Bernard all the way. He had that three backs behind it, but the main one was Kwame Bell. Kwame, a defensive lineman who just basically said, I'm going to push you across that goal line. And so the six points, and now in for the extra point, will be Ezekiel Aravello. Aravello ready to kick it out of the hold up, Derek Bernard. Derek's placement is down, kick is up, and it's good. Nearly blocked, though, by Travis Taylor and also Jake Latimer, who came storming in. But the kick goes up, and it is good, and the Omaha Beef lead this one 7 to nothing after each team has their chance at a possession. 10-17 left to go here, first quarter. And a 7 to nothing football game here at Ralston Arena. It's going to be a big challenge now. He wants Salina to come back on this possession. Get a good drive going. Help keep that confidence. More importantly, don't give Omaha much momentum. They had that momentum as we started the first quarter down at Salina here just a few weeks back and had that 10-point lead. Try to get things a little more balanced because you can't guarantee that you're going to have another comeback within you. So Salina will put out their return team. It'll be Ed Smith Jr. back deep for the Liberty. Also in front of him will be Daniel McKinney and Tracy Brooks. Aravalo will put the football on the goal line, and he will shade it all the way to the right-hand side outside of the hash marks as he's ready to kick this one away. His first one again, very, very good. It bounced at the two-yard line, then went over the wall, and he forced the Liberty to start it up the five-yard line. He'll try the same thing again. This one a little bit lower. Goes into the end zone, takes a high bounce. Ed Smith has to wait on it. Ed now just coming out across the goal line, and he will be stuck down at the two. Great coverage and a great kick by the Omaha kicking team. In on the tackle for the beef was Javon Bell, and Salina once again will start at the five-yard line. Yeah, good coverage. And it was that last high bounce. That ball took that final kick that delayed the return just enough to allow the coverage to kind of swarm on both sides and get in there to make the stop. So, as you said, first and ten once again from the five-yard line. How much urgency does that put in your head, knowing this is only a 50-yard field and that ball is just hanging in the air? Has to be a stressful situation for Ed Smith on that play. Here's a pitch out, first down, Tracy Brooks. Broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Now he's going to shimmy and shake his way up to the nine, and he'll be brought down there after a four-yard gain. It'll be second down and six. Brooks, the lead leaguer in yards and touchdowns. As he comes into this game, also we see him, as we did last week against the Wichita Force, Split out as a wide receiver a lot of times. This time, all three Liberty receivers, Pargo, Smith, and McKinney, all split to the left. The two slot guys will go in motion. Jackson, back to pass. Now look, wants to come downfield, throwing against the body. He's going to airmail it over the top of Daniel McKinney. He was covered on the play by Taylor Hawkins. Hawkins leads this team for the Omaha beef and interceptions with five on the season. Now it's third and six. Kind of looked at that time like McKinney almost stopped his route. It was caught flat-footed a little bit when Jackson actually then tried to go cross body to throw it. So as you said, third down and six. It was a good fake that time. As it looked as if Tracy Brooks was going to get that handoff before Jackson then rolled to the right. Big conversion attempt here for the Liberty. This time they're stacked up on the right-hand side. Four wide receivers, though. Jackson again, once and all, going down the middle of the field, and it's going to be caught! Ed Smith Jr. off the back of an Omaha defensive back, hauls it in, and it's a Liberty touchdown. Go ahead and chalk it up. This one comes from 43 yards away, and Ed Smith just robbed a football off the back of a defensive back for Omaha. Yeah, it looked like uh, trying to see who that was back there. Looked like it was Trey Dudley that was on the coverage. But again, that ball took a took a friendly bounce back off Dudley to the hands of Ed Smith. And great concentration 
on the part of the receivers. Jimmy Allen now in to try to tie this thing up. Extra point by Jimmy Allen. It's up and it's good. And we have a tie football game. It was the former Liberty defensive back, Trey Dudley, on coverage that time for the Omaha beat. But Ed Smith focused on the football, took it off his back as it bounced off Dudley's pads in the end zone. And Salina, almost an act of desperation, come back and they tie this game early on in the first quarter. 8.29 left to go. We have immediate timeout. 7-7. Seven to seven. Salina and Omaha all knotted up here at Ralston Arena on KINA. Dads always pay and never get anything free. Well, Elite Sports Paintball and Airsoft is out to change that with Father's Day Free Play. Bring Dad out for free admission, free equipment rental, and 200 paintballs for free. Everyone else gets equipment and 500 paintballs for just 25 bucks. Low impact, so everyone can have more fun. Get off the couch and do something fun with Dad. Father's Day Free Play this weekend, Saturday 10 to 6, and Sunday 11 to 5 at Elite Sports Paintball and Airsoft south of Salina. School is out and summer fun is here. So many activities, summer jobs, and family outings. It's that time of year where you may have to add a reliable, pre-loved vehicle to your driveway. Visit Salina Used Cars. They offer leasing no matter your current credit. They may be able to save you lots of money with a smarter way to finance. Vehicles starting at $2,900 and payments starting at $99. Qualifications apply, prices plus tax. See dealer for details. Visit both locations or shop 24-7 at SalinaUsedCars.com. ERP, or platelet-rich plasma injection therapy, has received quite a bit of attention since it's used by many professional athletes. Professional football players like Peyton Manning and Des Bryant have used PRP therapy for sports injuries and to avoid surgery. But you don't have to be a world-class athlete with millions of dollars for this cutting-edge therapy. PRP is available to you in the Salina Pain Clinic. Call the doctors for a consultation and see if this treatment is right for you. See them at 200 South 5th in the Salina Surgical Arts Center. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. Third down and six for the Liberty before the timeout. Andrew Jackson lets one unleash down the middle of the field. It goes off Trey Dudley's pads. Went off his hands first, then bounced off the back of his shoulder pads and landed right into the hands of Ed Smith Jr., Former Fort A. State Tiger collects his eighth receiving touchdown of the year. That's good now for second on the team. And the Salina Liberty pull even. And, Brian, that was a big, big play for the Liberty because if they give it back to Omaha, this thing could start sliding the other way in a very big hurry. Yeah, and you didn't want that to happen. But now, you know, let's see if the confidence can build. We see it a lot of times. The offense makes a play. The defense then steps their game up. Jimmy Allen's first kick bounces at the midfield stripe of the 25. That takes a big bounce, and it comes down to Chris Perry. Perry trying to get on the return, but he is collected by the former Cyclone from Iowa State. It's Jake Latimer along with his defensive end running buddy, Travis Taylor. They just stuck to Perry like glue, and they were not going to come off, and Perry gets stopped at the 10-yard line. That's where Derek Bernard and his Omaha beat offense will come out to start the second drive of the contest as we are knotted up seven points apiece. It'll be Latimer and Taylor on the bookends. The big guy from Georgia, right in the smack dab middle of him, a defensive tackle. His name is Chris May, 6'4", 370 pounds. Naquan Thomas, all of a sudden now second on the team in tackles in just six games, playing linebacker along with Dontre Matthews. Kendrick Harper, Winston Green in the backfield as well as defensive backs. Here's the give. It goes to Darian Miller. Miller, next to nothing, maybe got half a yard. Miller, a late pickup from Omaha after Antonio Bray left the team, we understand. Darian Miller, very, very good for Sioux City last year as he was one of the top offensive players in the league and also in the return game. That time, maybe got a yard and he is going to be stacked up. Now second down and nine. Also worth mentioning on the defense for the Liberty is Anthony Jones, a wide receiver who's been inactive the last couple weeks. Now he's out there playing corner in the absence of Isaiah Barfield and Frankie Solomon Jr. There's a flag on this play. They're going to throw it out to the left-hand side. It's going to be caught. Calvin Phillips on the reception. He'll gain seven on that play and then brought down against the wall, but there are a couple of flags on the field. Generally, we would see an illegal defense. Looks like they're kind of relaying it, though, to uh, Coach O'Neill, so chalk this one up potentially. Oh, we'll go off against Salina. I think you're 
may be on the right course there setting illegal defense because Jake Latimer did go back and he talked to Naquan Thomas. Now Thomas comes up and he's having a conversation with the line judge, one of the guys that threw a flag. And they basically said he lined up within five yards of line of scrimmage, which is one of the requirements for illegal defense. There's many of them, as we have learned over the last couple of years, but that is one of them. Naquan this time looking at the official. Gets lined up. Two receivers on the left-hand side. Derek Bernard goes that way. The pass is complete across midfield. And then a big hit at the 21-yard line after the pass is complete to Donovan Raspberry, another former Salina Liberty player. And then Donovan takes a quick swipe at Dontre Matthews after the play was over. But it's a first down for Omaha as the nose of the football now across the midfield stripe in Salina territory at the 20-yard line. will duck under center once again in his backfield. It's going to be Darian Miller. Miller straight ahead. A couple of yards, not much there on first down. Petrie Matthews stepped up, took a big hit on Miller. Let's go back to that play before. To Raspberry. They went in the direction of Anthony Jones. With Anthony being new, you expect... Omaha to maybe try to key in that area tonight. Watch the defensive back workouts before or before the game. And he was out there learning all he could. Here's Derek Bernard. He's going to throw it as he was going down on the ground, flat on his back. Liberty wanting intentional grounding as Jake Latimer came in and just planted at Derek Bernard. Bernard threw that one away. There was a receiver somewhat in the area, but again, we see Jake Latimer with a big, big hit on the Omaha quarterback. That was one of the things we talked about coming up was getting hits on the quarterback on Bernard early in this contest to try to then have him potentially rush some throws as the game progresses. That incomplete pass will bring up a third down and nine. Bernard will empty the backfield. All four receivers now on the left-hand side. They're going to overload it. Here comes Thomas on the blitz. Bernard lets it go. And a late flag. Oh, boy, the wide receiver on the play. Kane Farquharson asking for the flag, lobbying for the flag, and then the official threw it late. I'm not sure there was enough contact on that play, Brian, to warrant a pass interference or a holding call. No, any other crew. And, again, it's our first time we've had this crew. The more often you see crews, the more often you're going to get some calls. You're going to see illegal contact on that play. Coach Ron O'Neill shaking his head in disbelief. Again, we want to remind you, Coach O'Neill, when you talk to him, he has the attitude and he gets it all across to his players. When you go on the road, you're starting down 14 to nothing. So just one of those calls right there that I'm sure Coach O'Neill puts away in his mental bank. They're going to go out to Darian Miller out on the screen this time. Miller puts his shoulder down, tries to run through Jones to get to the goal line. And Dontre Matthews coming over to help out his buddy on that play, Anthony Jones. And they stop him at the two. First down and goal again for the Omaha Beat. We are tied 7-7 seven to seven with five minutes left to go in the first quarter. For that first game down at Salina. You know, after the end of that first quarter, then it became a, a bend, don't break type defense. We'll see if the defense can step up here on first and goal. Still Taylor and Latimer in there. They're bookending Chris Mays right now. Bernard back to pass. Now he wants to run. There's a flag on the play. And Derek Bernard across the goal line for what is signaled as a touchdown. And they're going to say illegal defense again on Salinas. So this touchdown will stand. It'll go to 13-7 to Omaha with the extra point pending from Aravella. So they went against both linebackers. And that's one of the things, the linebackers, you know, as you mentioned a few minutes ago, all they have to do is look over towards the official. The official will give them a thumbs up, thumbs down as to where their placement is. Extra point pending. This one's blocked. Liberty have it. Naquan Thomas off the deflection has the football. He's still running, and he'll be tackled at about the 24-yard line as one of the offensive linemen caught up with him. But a block and a flag down on the field. 
Travis Taylor again got in there along with some of his buddies, Winston Green, Dana Harris, also came crashing through, and Omaha is saying this is on Salina. Line judge pointing towards the direction of Salina as well. Holding on Omaha. Oh. So, of course, Salina is going to decline that, and the block will stand as Omaha now has a six point lead, 13 to 7, and we have a media timeout. Once again, in the first quarter, 441 left to go. Omaha leading 13 to 7 after two Derek Bernard rushing touchdowns here on KINA. Right, here we go. Steve C's car. Steve C's car's on the west side of Abilene. Yeah, Abilene Car Sales. It's the place that will save you lots of money. Uh, all right, kids, here we go. Top four reasons to visit Abilene Car Sales. Number four, good credit, bad credit, no credit, no problem. Number three, two free oil changes. Number two, just one dollar down with approved credit. And the number one reason, we are still saving you money on the west side of Abilene and at AbileneCarSales.com. When you hire street plumbing, heating, and electric in Salina and Lincoln, you'll be making a great decision. Providing full-service plumbing and HVAC, they have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. They work with you throughout the project to ensure you get the personalized service you deserve from licensed and insured technicians. Excellent customer service in Central Kansas since 1985. The experienced team will clean the premises once the job is done. Street Plumbing, Heating, and Electric. Know them better at streetphe.com. Hill, Hillside. Riverfest is this week in Salina, and you're going to need ice. This week, when you buy a case of your favorite beverage at Hillside Liquor, you get a free bag of ice. Lots of non-class options for Riverfest and free ice. Just one of the many ways we're trying to show our amazing customers how much we appreciate them. Hillside Liquor at the corner of Ohio and Crawford by McDonald's. Hillside Liquor. 21 beans, 21. You're listening to Champions Indoor Football on KINA. Talked about it in pregame, and so far it's come to fruition here, Brian Berner. Derek Bernard's legs can be a dangerous, dangerous weapon on the season coming into this game. Seven rushing touchdowns in six games with Omaha. He has tacked on two more here in the early going against the Salina Liberty. And right now the Omaha beat leading Salina 13-7 to with 441 left to go here in the first quarter. And each team has had two possessions. That blocked point after attempt was something that that we thought we could potentially see. You called it out watching the game on Monday night. This kicker for Omaha has a very low trajectory. Salina has that knack of being able to get in there and apply some pressure. Not only have they blocked a number, but they've made an equal amount a little bit more difficult. They showed that they have it. And that's one thing I think the coaching staff should be aware of as they get more into this game. This one's going to be stabbed by Tracy Brooks at the 14-yard line. Tracy, that will bring it to the 20, where he is brought down there by a couple of different Omaha players. But Tracy did a very good job keeping that ball from going over the wall. It would have went out about between the 10 and the 12. So Tracy saved his team about eight yards there. We're giving Tracy a, a rough time. He went out on the golf course for one of the first times. He mentioned it to us. He's a former baseball player. That was one he fielded like like a baseball player. We heard his golf swings much like a baseball player, too. <laughs> but he got better. Jimmy Allen was very complimentary of him. There's a quick pass out to Pargo. He's going to catch it at the 25. This will be a five-yard catch for Rashad Pargo. Sometimes he does catch passes that aren't for touchdowns. That is his 41st reception of the season. He is second in the league. One touchdown behind Dello Davis from Albuquerque with 18 touchdowns on the season. Five yards on first down. We'll make a second out and five. Ball setting just a yard shy of the midfield stripe at the 24-yard line. 3.33 left to go. Salina with the football, trailing by six. Three receivers on the right-hand side. Brooks in the backfield. Jackson back to pass. They slip it to Brooks. He breaks the tackle. No, he doesn't. He can't get away. Hanging on for dear life. And making the tackle is the leading tackler on this Omaha defense. It's Desmond Reed. But Brooks still gets the first down by about a yard as he drug Desmond Reed. That extra step to get the first down. But a good tackle for Reed in Omaha. Tracy kind of hung that ball out there, making that last-ditched effort. And was able to get just enough for that first down. So 
Go into beef territory for the first time tonight. And around to Rashad Pargo. He's negotiating his way through traffic back across the line of scrimmage. Rashad will gain four as his helmet is popped off. And an aggressive hit from Kwame Bell, one of the defensive linemen for Omaha. Yep. Rashad Pargo will have to exit this game. Oh, looks like he's got to fix the helmet. So Matthew Craig will come in for the first time in this contest. Craig inactive against Omaha on Sunday because of a little bit of a knee issue, but I understand he's back in there tonight. Good thing, too, because Tyler Jones suspended for a borderline hit last week against Wichita. It's a very judgmental call, but Jones suspended for the game here tonight. And the play clock's down to 4-3. Timeout's going to be called. It's part of that issue. You had Daniel McKinney and Matthew Craig. They've not been in the lineup together. Right. Not sure as to who went where. Matthew Craig is kind of pleading, hey, this is where I thought I should be. Not sure if he's going to quite win that battle, though. But a good timeout. You don't want to give up any unnecessary yards on penalty or delay a game when you're spotted at the 16-yard line. So, since you burned the timeout, that allows Rashad Pargo to come back in the game. As Matthew Craig goes back out. The line is sitting right now with their line of scrimmage at the 16-yard line. Second down and six. 13-7, Omaha lead. Omaha with the absence of orange in their jerseys tonight. For a team that orange is one of their primary colors, they're going with what I would call a ghost gray effect with a lot of black on it. Black helmets and that beef logo on the side. Here's Jackson, back to pass. His offensive line doing work, protecting, and Jackson's going to go ahead and throw this one away. He just didn't have anybody open down the field. But his offensive line, Kelvin McCoy, Isaiah Trussell, and Kamali Matthews, Brian, did their jobs. They did an outstanding job of holding, holding Omaha back, giving Andrew as much time. And the downfall was they were holding, but they kept pedaling backwards, which then was forcing Andrew back. He's strong enough, though. He was able to, even leaning backwards, get that ball safely out of bounds. Third down coming up. Third down and six. Salina has to get across the 10-yard line to move the chains for a first down. They're going to go ahead and dispatch all four wide receivers to the right-hand side, including Tracy Brooks. Jackson, back to pass, still dancing, unleashes it to the goal line. It's broken up in the last minute. Pargo was the intended receiver, but coming in, making a phenomenal play was Trey Dudley, the defensive back for Omaha, the former Liberty player, came in and knocked that one out of Pargo's hands at the very last minute, and Herod O'Neill will dial up Jimmy Allen for the field goal. Jimmy Allen will come in, which you mentioned, and Wolverine's in town. He's got some buddies in town. I think we probably learned a little bit more about Jimmy than we wanted to in pregame. This will be put down at the 23-yard line. It's going to be a 31-yard attempt. Tracy Brooks is the holder. Kick is up. And it is coming to the left-hand side. No good. And if there was one deficiency we saw with Jimmy Allen in that pregame warm-up, Ryan, it was that he was hooking things to the left. More often than not, and Omaha will take over at the five-yard line. Yeah, he, he definitely was pulling quite a bit uh, that direction. He'll kind of get in the routine. I'm surprised he didn't make the quick adjustment. Just kind of realign that plan for just a little bit in order to kind of get that to draw back. But this will point uh, the beef starting at their own five-yard line. Omaha looking for the leg up, so to speak, as they will take another possession here. It will be their third possession of the game. They have scored on their first two as we enter the final seconds of the opening quarter. 13-7 Omaha leading Salina. Gary Bernard will send two receivers in motion. 
And it's picked off. Kendrick Harper, the former Jayhawk in the 15, comes back to the 10 to the 5, and he's ran out of bounds by the offensive line for the Salina Liberty. And something happened there really bad on the read between Derek Bernard and his intended receiver. I don't even know who that might have been, as Kendrick Harper was the receiver on that play. Yeah, it just looked like he was throwing straight to a blue shirt. As Kendrick really didn't even have to adjust much. As we take a look again, and again, you know, a lot of times you'll say, okay, you know, the defensive back jumped that route. He did. He was just basically standing right in the path of that ball. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. End of one. Liberty with some defensive momentum here provided by the former Kansas Jayhawk, Kendrick Harper, and Salina trailing Omaha by six as we go to the second quarter. But they are knocking on the door at the five, 13 to seven. Beef leading the Liberty at the end of one right here on KINA. Hey there, you got grass? I mean the green kind, partner. Outlaw Lawn Care will be right there when your grass needs a cut. Whether commercial or residential, Outlaw Lawn Care will treat you like family. Your yard gets that kind of treatment, too. Good folks all around. Military and first responder discounts. Free estimates and competitive rates. Here comes the phone number. 75-201-5532-201-5532. Outlaw Lawn Care. No root and tootin'. Flat by night. Blonde bone going on here. We bag high prices as well as we bag grass. Search Outlaw Lawn Care on Facebook. Think about the most special day in your life, your wedding day. Sand Springs Venue wants to help you with your planning and make your day absolutely perfect. Sand Springs has just expanded, adding an additional 800 square feet and a new ceremony area. Treat your guests to a climate-controlled interior for your reception and a special bridal dressing room. Sand Springs Venue has the perfect setting for you, celebrating I do's with your loved ones present. Call Gina today and see more with Sand Springs Venue on Facebook. The Liberty plays here, here. Salina Sports Station is KINA. Back here at Ralston Arena in Omaha, Devin Haney along with Brian Berner. Big Sam Pretty is producing and engineering as we have one of three games on the schedule tonight. The Omaha Beef leading the Salina Liberty at the end of the first quarter, 13-7. to The Amarillo Venom tonight in Wichita to play. The Wichita Force, also the Sioux City Bandits on the road tonight in Enid to play the Oklahoma Flying Aces. Join us next week. We'll have a 6.30 pregame. It's Countdown to Kickoff brought to you by Comfort Heating and Air as we travel into New Mexico to take on the Duke City Gladiators. It'll be the number one team in the South Division taking on what could be the North Division champions in the Salina Liberty. But they need to win this game here tonight in order to make that count and that claim before they head into New Mexico next Saturday night. Again, pregame set to you for 6.30 kickoff at 7 o'clock from Albuquerque. Much needed provided possession here, Brian, for a Kendrick Harper in that Liberty defense to put his Salina Liberty offense in their best field position of the night at the five-yard line where it's first down and goal. Yeah, you always look and you get to Make those turnovers, turn those into points. They're, you know, basically considered some free points. Chance to take their first potential lead. Here's the pitch out to Tracy Brooks, looking for the goal line. He dives, gets there, but he's a little bit short. Now the far side official comes rolling in. The line judge on the near side got out of position as Kamali Matthews and company was sweeping on the lead blocks, trying to get Tracy into the end zone. The official had to get out of the way, so the line judge on the other side of the field comes rolling in, and he said touchdown for Tracy Brooks, and that is now a league-leading 18th touchdown of the year. And for Tracy Brooks, he has now tied Rashad Pargo for the for the team lead in touchdowns. They both have 18. That time Omaha read it well. They were going right in that direction. But as you said, Kamali Matthews leading the way, 6-3-3-10. He's going to give Tracy Brooks just enough room to cross that goal line. Tracy now trying to hold the snap. He bobbles it. He's going to come up with it. Now look to the end zone. He's going to come back and be tackled and lose that possession on the extra point of 10. Tracy Brooks now just kind of bobbled that snap, Brian. It didn't come back to him right where he wanted it, so he's going to try to make a play and then swallowed it at the end. Yeah, and the problem was he didn't have anybody open up. You know, Jimmy kind of ran out to that left side. He had Kamali kind of over on the right side, but, uh, you know, nothing there. Fortunately, I guess you would say, Salina was able to have the blocked extra point 
on Omaha's last score. So we're not at its third team. Really, just what we expected coming into this contest. I said Tracy has tied Rashad Fargo for 18 touchdowns, the team lead, but that's just what, what I would call their craft. Tracy has 18 rushing touchdowns. Rashad Fargo has 18 receiving touchdowns, but then when you look and they dabble in their other positions, Tracy has five receiving touchdowns. Rashad has two rushing touchdowns. So actually, Tracy has three more touchdowns, but when you look at their primary skill and their role on this team, they both have 18, so I wanted to clear that up. Andrew Jackson, clearly the league leader, or the team leader in touchdowns right now with 44 on the season, actually 45 after the earlier one he threw to Ed Smith Jr. That all makes sense, right? Yeah, I understood it perfectly. <laughs> Need a flow chart for that. But, uh, I got it all covered. There We're you good. Go. We're in good shape. Back deep now for the Omaha Beef will be Chris Perry along with Darian Miller. Jimmy Allen bounces it at the 20, now bounces over the midfield stripe, and it puts Darian Miller right on the back of his pants, and he is going to be picked up by Travis Taylor and then set down gently on his feet. It's one of those rules in this league, you can't pick somebody up and then slam them. Travis Taylor did not do that at all. Darian Miller ducked his head. Travis came in and almost in a wrestling move, picked him up, and then... Basically carried him until he was safe to put back down on his feet yeah, it, and it, gently sent him back down. Kind of looked like it possibly was Anthony Jones kind of going up doing the Dikembe Mutombo going, no, 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 put him down, put him down. <laughs> it's such an innocent move when you're taught your whole life to tackle aggressively. I remember Isaiah Bartfield got caught up in one of those situations. It might have been here in this building where he picked somebody up and tackled him to the ground and got a flag for it. But that time Travis was... Most likely getting a little help on the play. Now a ball comes loose as Javier Dyer comes out with it, but they're going to say the runner was down after a gain of about three yards. Yeah, it looked like he potentially was down when the ball kind of was, was pulled away. So no hesitation. Coach O'Neill is saying we'll let that call go. An interception by Kendrick Harper, by the way. On that last defensive possession for the Liberty, his second as a Salina Liberty player. Here's one now that is knocked out of the air and then off the receiver's hands by Naquan Thomas. And I said at the onset, Brian, a stat that really kind of made me raise my eyebrows after six weeks of being active for the Liberty. Naquan Thomas now second on the team in tackles behind Travis Taylor. Well, he just, he's everywhere on that field. Remember the second half against Wichita on Sunday, it seemed like we called his name every play. Yeah, we made reference, you know, some of these DBs, we're not, we don't feel like we're calling their names as much as we thought. Third down and seven now for Derek Bernard of the beef. He wants to run, gets up to the line of scrimmage, and he unloads it to Darian Miller. Spin move at the 25, comes across the 20 to the 15, ran down from behind by Dontre Matthews, and he's going to be taken down at the 13-yard line. What a play there between Derek Bernard and newcomer for the Omaha beef, Darian Miller. Darian Miller. You know, he's not really that big, 5'10", 200 pounds, but he can move. He's shifty. He's able to go, kind of make those spin moves. Another Jayhawk in this game. Former University of Kansas running back, Darian Miller. First down for the beef. Here's the handoff. Straight up the gut, a gain of about two and a half yards will go to Calvin Phillips. Phillips a big back. Not only is he thick around the bottom side of his legs, but he is also very, very tall. He almost looks like a big receiver tight end type running that football sometimes. I remember a couple of years ago up here, Calvin Phillips just seemed like he just tore us apart. Take those out routes and just uncontested down the sideline. Phillips this time will... Set up on the left-hand side of Derek Bernard. Fake to Phillips. He's going to lead block for Bernard, who is taken down by Dontre Matthews. Dontre came in and wrecked the Omaha quarterback for no gain on the play. And now Derek Bernard throws the football at the Liberty defense. This will be a flag, I believe, on Derek Bernard, unless somebody said something to provoke that that the officials heard. We'll wait and have them sort it out. Don't want to overstep. A little bit of jawing back and forth there, and you see Derek Bernard pitch that football. Well, 
but then he, after his call, he takes a bow towards the official. So that'll be his first. You gotta think that maybe turns up in the ears of the defensive lineman for the Liberty at this point, too. Right now, those linemen are Dana Harris, who has seen more and more action over the past few weeks at defensive line, Travis Taylor to his right, and Javier Dyer, who played really, really well in Wichita on Sunday. He's on the left-end spot right now. Third down, and a good distance to go here. It's third and 21 for Omaha. Lots of time as the Liberty only rushing one. They drop everybody else, and it's picked off right at the goal line. An interception. It's Dontre Matthews, his fourth interception in the last three weeks. And now a little skirmish breaks out between one of the offensive linemen and Jake Latimer. But a pick on the second consecutive possession for the Liberty defense. This time it's d -Tray. Interesting thing. Only one defensive lineman in Salina was putting pressure on the quarterback. He took all three offensive linemen to keep him away. It was Dana Harris. From Derek Bernard. That allowed more coverage in back. So that was an excellent scheme and call by Coach Ron O'Neill. And you wonder if Coach O didn't go to that alignment to not protect against the pass so much, but protect against the running ability of Derek Bernard. And it worked. It worked extremely well. He threw the football into coverage, and Dontre Matthews gets his fourth interception of the season. Now from the five-yard line, end around, here comes Ed Smith. Slams on the brakes, changes direction. Has green grass in front of him to the 10, and then brought down against the wall where he hit hard. Boy, Ed grasping for his left hip right away as he hit that wall very hard and he's going to have to come out of the game as he goes right towards the gate now he's looks like he's going to stay on now he's going to come off boy he hit that wall a ton didn't he and again you know we talked about it last week we talked about it when we're here hockey arena sturdy boards low boards to where they're going to hit you about waist high but he got the first down after a gain of 10 and a half here's tracy brooks pitch out right hand side maybe got a yard or two as isaiah trussell out there leading the way trussell gets up and exchanges pleasantries with robert and cuba both of those guys respecting each other and they're going to give tracy a yard on first down 10 29 left to go before halftime we'll have the league commissioner and a big part of this omaha b team currently ricky burtz with us at halftime that's part of our precision electric feature at the half Score is tied, 13-13. Andrew Jackson, three receivers on the left-hand side. Drops back to pass, clean pocket. Now he steps up, lets it go, down the field, to the end zone. And it's caught! Up against the wall is Daniel McKinney, and here come the Liberty. Two interceptions that have been converted into touchdowns by the Liberty offense, and Andrew Jackson put that one right on the nose, the only place he could have put it, over the outstretched arms of the defensive back for Omaha, and it lands with Daniel McKinney. McKinney went down one-on-one -on -one with Chris Perry. Andrew stepped up in that pocket. At one point, it looked like he thought he might have that ball slapped away. Stepped up, unloaded to that corner. As you said, it was going to be touchdown or nothing the way he had that ball placed. So so Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy Allen back in now. McKinney gets a touchdown against his former team. Snap back to Tracy Brooks. Jimmy Allen pokes it through, and the Liberty on the strength of two interceptions have come from behind. They trailed by six, now they lead by seven with 9.59 left to go here before the half. Boy, a little bit of a swing here like we saw in the first game. Remember that game? Omaha was up 19-9, to nine, and then the Liberty defense put on the brakes. So it's all about capitalizing on those turnovers. They're not quite inside nine minutes yet, so we're not going to have immediate time out here. Once we get the kicking and return teams back onto the field, we'll continue play. The two interceptions by Kendrick Harper and Dontre Matthews. Big, big turn of events for the Salina Liberty as their offense has capitalized on those turnovers and got touchdowns off of both. So those two interceptions have not only kept Omaha off the board, but they've generated 13 points for the Liberty offense. And a defense for the Liberty 
grabbing two interceptions without Isaiah Barfield and without Frankie Solomon Jr. in action tonight. Yeah, we were concerned, uh, you know, what we might see, but the rest of this defensive unit, they, they stepped up, and, and again, if you can get the pressure with just one or two linemen kind of attacking the offense, allow that extra player to drop back, that's definitely going to be in the advantage. And I know it's been mixed company so far. A lot of guys coming in on the defensive line, but just thinking about Jake Latimer and Travis Taylor, they're not your prototypical defensive linemen. They're really linebackers right. playing in that quick end spot. We call it the NASCAR package for the Salina Liberty. When you have guys like that that can drop and play linebacker type spots on the outside, boy, that's valuable too. They're not going to weigh you down. They can get up and down the field. Yeah, that's exactly right. Looks like Omaha one player short on this coverage team. Kwame Bell comes in late. And now Chris Perry back deep along with Darian Miller. Jimmy Allen, a high end over end kick. This is the first air ball we've seen from either kicker so far tonight. Darian Miller's going to take it. He is absolutely smashed at the three yard line by Javier Dyer and Jake Latimer. And Brian, that's the point we were just making. Your most athletic guy sometimes on the special team unit are your defensive linemen. Yeah, and, and it's what we, we've talked about it, you know, for the last couple of years. You know, you have a guy like Jake Latimer, such a valuable part of your defense. Why are you having him out on special teams? Well, one, he wants to be on special teams. He loves being out there, and he brings such a high level of play and emotion to that group. First man down the field, first man to make contact, and he holds that tackle all the way through to the end. And Javier Dyer, remember, he was inactive against Omaha in the first meeting. Here's a pass over the middle of the field and a beautiful tackle by Brock Long, who's active tonight for the Liberty, playing that middle linebacker spot. He might have just saved a boatload of yardage for the Liberty defense after the pass was completed by Javon Bell. Javon turned and thought he was going to have some room to run, but then all of a sudden Brock comes in from nowhere and ends up tackling him from behind for no yards after catch. Yeah, it's good to see Brock back out there. He was injured for a while, then inactive. So I think he's excited to be back on the field. Still missing a good chunk of paint on that helmet. Here comes Brock again. He's going to come up and make the tackle on Calvin Phillips after a minimal gain. Calvin will get about four yards on that play, and it's going to be second down and six. As Naquan Thomas not in the game right now. He's over talking to Coach Theo Johnson on the sidelines with Brock Long in the middle of that Liberty defense. Well, again, it's good. Keep these guys fresh. Go with this rotation. You know they want to be out there. But the value is going to be in that third and, more importantly, in that fourth quarter when they have the little bit extra in the tank. Second down and a five. Here's a snap. It's a bad one through the legs of one of the running backs, and it's recovered by Dana Harris. Dana Harris, they call him Shug. Ron O'Neill's telling him to roll to through towards the goal line, and Dana Harris comes up, and he makes another takeaway for the Liberty. Three straight turnovers for Omaha, and Ron O'Neill is feeling it, boy. He's looking over to his sideline, clapping his hands, saying, here we go. And right away, Andrew Jackson is back out onto the field, and that was just a horrible snap from center. Yeah, bad snap. And it just kept rolling and unable to pick that thing up. It actually went between the legs of running back Calvin Phillips. That's how bad it missed Derek Bernard if it was intended for him. Could have been. We don't know a direct snap to the running back, but I doubt it. Phillips looked shocked. The ball was even in his area. Now from the five. Hand off Tracy Brooks. Dive right behind Kamali Matthews and Kelvin McCoy. Tracy Brooks will score his second touchdown of the night. And he pitches the ball to the official as the Liberty now have gone up 26-13 with 8.08 left to play before halftime. No hesitation that time. Tracy Brooks had it, had a good lane, and was able to get into the end zone. So now Jimmy Allen back out. Tracy Brooks, as always, rewarded for scoring a touchdown with the opportunity to hold on the point after. The fumble recovery by Dana Harris set up that one-play drive and a touchdown for Tracy Brooks. Here's the snap from Kelvin McCoy. Brooks puts it down. Allen kicks it up and through. And the Salina Liberty now, after trailing 13-6, have rattled off 21 straight points. And they lead 27-13. And that brings us to our second quarter. Media timeout. 8.08 left to play before the intermission. Salina sprinting back out in front. They lead at 27-13 right here on KINA. High water levels, heavy rain, and flooding can bring unwanted moisture into your home. Hi, 
I'm Quentin Cole, owner of Cole Strong Carpet Cleaning. We specialize in the cleaning of your carpet, eliminating unwanted moisture, mildew, and even potential mold. Call me today. We offer a variety of services and would be happy to provide you with a free estimate. See our story and learn more about Cole Strong Carpet Cleaning at C-O-L-E strongcarpet.com. Professional service that treats you like family. When termites strike your home or business, you want to fight back with the best. Hasman Termite and Pest Control to the rescue. With over 57 years experience, they offer the best of options, including the new BASF High Precision Injection Treatment. Don't let termites get you down. With one phone call to Hasman's, they can put one in the win column for you. Call Hasman Termite and Pest Control today or visit HasmanTermite.com and follow them on Facebook. Have you thought about upgrading your vehicle but hate spending all day at a dealership that does not value your time? Hi, Chris Sherbring with Bennett Buick GMC, personally inviting you in to see how car buying should be. With our no-pressure, non-commissioned sales staff, our upfront pricing, and an award-winning service department, I am confident you will choose us for your next vehicle. Our best price guarantee and high trading values, there's no reason to shop anywhere else. Stop in and see us at 651 South Ohio or visit us on the web 24 hours a day at BennettBuickGMC.com. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. Salina Liberty Football brought to you by Bennett Buick GMC. They have some sweet, brand new Buick Encores arriving to the lot, and these things are fully loaded. If you want a smaller SUV that's fun to drive and gets great gas mileage, go by Bennett Buick GMC. As soon as they swing the doors open on Monday and look at the new Buick Encores, I promise you're going to like what you see. Here's Jimmy Allen's kick now after another Liberty touchdown following an Omaha turnover. It's taken back by Darian Miller at the five-yard line, and then Miller hit hard again and again. It is going to be Jake Latimer, Javier Dyer, and this time they got a little bit of help from the former Southeast of Saline Trojan, Brock Long. Oh boy, those guys are flying on special teams, aren't they? They are. A couple scores to pass along. Amarillo leads Wichita 30 to seven that in the second quarter and also in the second quarter Sioux City ahead of Oklahoma 24 to 17. Back out onto the field after three straight turnovers Eric Bernard is going to take the snap and he's going to go off and run hit by Anthony Jones and then smacked by Dontre Matthews in the middle of the field boy Dontre has been really hitting hard lately and it looks like Omaha wants to run a little hurry up here. That was a big carry by Bernard all the way across midfield to the Salina 21-yard line. Trying to get everybody back into the thick of things here. Naquan Thomas still out. Brock Long in there. Here's Darian Miller. He drops a pass. That Brock Long bearing down on him from the middle of the field. Might have heard footsteps as Miller drops that football. Bernard looked over at Miller and said, catch it with your hands. Hey, that's one of those things. They're just not used to each other. Miller's well, right easy for Bernard to say when Brock Long's not in his face. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You know, Miller's only been here a couple days. Probably haven't uh, had near as many reps as he'd like to have. After the incomplete pass, it's second down and 10 from the Salina 21-yard line. Two receivers in motion, one on each side. Bernard back, has clean pocket. Now he's going to let it go over the middle of the field. Nearly picked off again. This one off the lunging fingertips of Winston Green, who actually... One of the team leaders in interceptions, he and Dontre Matthews each have four. Yeah, Winston kind of had it cut back, go to his left, tried to stretch out. Would have been a pretty acrobatic interception had he been able to get it. And more importantly, it's third and ten. Tracy Brooks entered the DB huddle in pregame warm-up and said, told Winston Green, you're the interceptions leader. How about you give me one today? How about a pick six? He was challenging his teammate. Here's Bernard now on a crossing route. Has the intended receiver. It's the leading receiver on this team, Javon Bell. It's good for an Omaha first down as they keep this drive alive. Six minutes left to play before halftime, 27 to 13. And the football plays down now at the eight-yard line where it's first and goal for the beat. Yeah, that time Bell was just able to come across get underneath the defensive back and was able to get that reception well in front of the yard to gain mark. 
This time, Miller in the backfield along with Derry Bernard. Two receivers on the right, both in motion. They'll turn into blockers. The handoff goes to Miller. Darian inside the five gets tackled at the four by Winston Green. Also coming in to help out is Anthony Jones. And Jones, after spending the whole season on the roster as a receiver, Brian, he's impressed me with his physicality coming in on some of these tackles for the Liberty. Yeah, it's, you know what? Give me an opportunity to play. I don't care which side of the ball. Those guys always, they like a chance to put a little hit and hurt on somebody else. Chris Mays, Javier Dyer, Travis Taylor, the defensive line right now for a second down and goal from the four-yard line for the beat. Little flag route out to the right-hand side. It's going to be short of the goal line. Coming up about a half a yard shy was Javon Bell. He caught that coming out of the backfield, and it'll be third down and goal from inside of the one for Omaha. They're going to call on some extra enforcement to go heavy with that big formation in the backfield again. Kwame Bell, the defensive lineman, will enter the game. Well, I know there's a lot of options that they could call. Chuck Wright probably knows what he'd want, but I have a feeling Derek Bernard is going to keep this himself. It's what he did last time. He has both of the Omaha touchdowns so far, and he does. He keeps it, but he is going to be stymied. And there was a big hit in there by the Liberty. It was Brock Long that came in and dove through that gap and made contact. He didn't bring Derek Bernard down, but he, forward, he stopped his forward progress, and it's going to be short of the goal line now, fourth down. A big, big play by that front three plus Brock Long. This might remind you of uh, the game last year. Had a couple shots to get across the end zone from fourth and one. We'll see if it plays itself back out a game at home when Bernard was unable to get it across from, I think he had three attempts from the one yard line. He's going to try it again. This time he has one of his running backs behind him. It's Kwame Bell actually, the defensive lineman, pushing him in. And Kwame Bell step pulling away, flexing his muscle. He might as well give that touchdown to Kwame yeah. Bell. It's Derek Bernard's third rushing touchdown officially of the game. But Kwame Bell had everything to do with that after Derek Bernard's progress was stopped. Yeah, just basically, Bell picked him up, seemed like he just kind of carried him over. But that's why you put basically a fullback type body back behind there in that three back formation. So now we'll see Zeke Aravalo again. On for the extra point, trying to put 20 points on the board for the Omaha Beef and make this a seven point game. Placement is down, kick is up, and it is true as Aravalo gets the extra point. And with 3.33 left to play before halftime, we are back to a seven-point contest, 27 to 20, and a media timeout. We'll step away from Ralston Arena, back with more Liberty football after this on KINA. A1 Plumbing Services, a proud supporter of the Salina Liberty football team. A1 Plumbing makes your life easy. Competitive rates and quick response times, plus all work, including labor and parts, are guaranteed. A1 Plumbing is open to service 24 hours a day. New construction and remodeling are just the beginning of the many services master plumber Chris Bogan and his team perform. Save time and money with sewer camera service. Don't wait. Call A1 Plumbing, 827-4888. That's 827-4888. With the recent severe weather, we experienced a good amount of hail. If your RV sustained hail damage, you don't have to wait for your insurance company. Just take your camper to Four Seasons RV Acres. The service department at Four Seasons works with most major insurance companies and will help you submit your camper claim and get you fixed up in time for the summer weather ahead. If you want to trade your damaged RV for a new one, a great deal is waiting for you at Four Seasons RV Acres, just six miles east of Abilene on I-70, where the fun begins. Duty box steel frame, but not built for the road because driving it on anything, even remotely flat, would be a waste of diesel. This is the Roxor from Mahindra, a legendary off road vehicle with more than 70 years of hardcore heritage. All new, no mercy. Test drive yours today. Your new Roxor is a Salina Power Sports, a legend reinvented Roxor by Mahindra. Stop by Salina Power Sports for a test drive today, 632 South Broadway in Salina. <laughs> You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. 
Welcome back to Ralston Arena. The kick from Aravalo is up in the air. End over end kick. Ed Smith is going to let it bounce. Now it goes straight up in the air. Smith will take it five yards deep in the end zone. He brings it out across the goal line, out to the five. A little hesitation, dance move at the 10, and he'll dive ahead to about the 11 and a half where Andrew Jackson and this Liberty offense will come out for another drive with 3.14 left to go here before the half. Two passing touchdowns so far for Andrew Jackson. He has found Ed Smith and also Daniel McKinney in this game. Tracy Brooks has two rushing touchdowns as well. McCoy will approach the football. He's the left-handed center in front of Andrew Jackson. Three minutes left to play, 27 to 20. So line out in front. Jackson back to pass, middle of the field, has his receiver. It's Smith. Head to the 20 and then across the 20 to the 21. And he will be very, very close to a first down. They're going to say he's just a yard shy. They're going to actually place him down at the 20 where it's second down and one. That's just not that ball. Started to go kind of to turn to his left. Had he got that and just turned to his right, he would have had some open field coming towards us. It's like a horrible spot. Well, just second down and in inches. We got to look. They're not even going the right direction. Right. Jackson back to pass. Again, sidearm. He'll get Tracy Brooks. Tracy out just shy of the midfield stripe at the 24. That'll take that bad spot out of play. Now as Salina does get the first down, and they have a new set of downs at the midfield stripe, just shy of the 25-yard line, trying to push it into beef territory with two minutes left to go. That first down just kind of bailed the chain gang out a little bit, as well as the linesman on this side. Andrew Jackson, two receivers in motion. Brooks on a delay, takes the handoff. He'll angle left-hand side. Runs over a would-be tackler, but hanging on and completing that tackle is Trey Dudley. He's one of the best in the business. We had the opportunity to watch him play last year in Salina, and he was just a joy to watch. Uh, not only a joy to watch, but this was, was fun to visit with. Just appreciates everything that he's had the opportunity to do, both collegiately as well as here in the indoor. A couple of yards on first down from Tracy Brooks. Makes a second down and eight. 75 seconds left to go. Jackson back to pass. Unloads it. It's McKinney. McKinney to the 20. Now cuts it back to the middle of the field. 15. Still on his feet to the 12. 10. 5. Takes on a tackler and steps it into the end zone. They're going to say he is across for a touchdown. Daniel McKinney, his second touchdown of the night. That makes five on the season, and he has put the Salina Liberty back up by a baker's dozen with 101 left to play before halftime. One of the things that broke that play open for Daniel McKinney was it looked like two of the Omaha B players kind of ran into each other, thus taking them out of out of the play. One it looked like was Kwame Bell, who we've called his name quite a bit on the offensive side, but he was in pursuit. Just that little bit of, of adjustment allowed McKinney enough to make his way over to that left side of the end zone. Jimmy Allen on for the extra point. Snap coming from Kelvin McCoy. Back to Tracy Brooks. Brooks puts it down. Kick is up, and it is good. Daniel McKinney, we talk about him a lot since he joined this Liberty team, Brian. When you look at him physically, he doesn't look like a guy that will burn you on the field like that. It looks like he'll run over a bunch of dudes. But it doesn't look like he is a guy that can run away from people. He did just that. We've seen him do it before. Yeah, he's, you know, he just brings, I don't know what it, what it is he brings to the game. He just that little bit of extra that, that he digs down deep. He's a competitor. He wants out there. He wants that ball. And, again, it, it was a great play that he was able to get it, cut back across. But, again, the patience of Andrew Jackson – he really doesn't rush. We, we talked about it when we were down on the field before the game. You know, just looking at him, he always has such a calm appearance about him. He'll like to be able to step up in that pocket, find that receiver. Don't get me wrong. He's had his share of turnovers, but it's tough to get him frustrated, which is what you need someone to lead that offensive unit. Yeah, he is cool as ice. He already has three touchdowns in this game, 47 touchdowns on the year. In the league, when you look at the standings, he only trails Nate Davis and Amarillo. 
for touchdowns thrown. Looking at the replay now, Daniel McKinney just totally switched directions, went from the right-hand side of the field to the left and ended up scoring in that left corner. Jimmy Allen, the birthday boy, ready to kick it off. He is going to low-line drive this one, and it takes a bad bounce, and it goes into the end zone. It's up off the back wall. Going in is Chris Perry. Perry trying to bring it out. Now he has some room, but Brock Long brings the ball free. It's a fumble, and the Liberty has it. The Salina Liberty get another turnover, and it's off of a big hit by Brock Long, and Jake Latimer is down near the goal line, and he is in pain. Boy, Jake, it looked like maybe... An injury to his left leg somewhere where he got banged up, and Jake is in some pain. Boy. I did not even see, Brian, who recovered that football. Did you? Was it Dontre Matthews in there? I wasn't sure whether it was Matthews or Kendrick Harper. They're calling for somebody to come Kendrick over and help Jake Latimer. Right. At that time, we'll, we'll kind of wait to see on that replay, but Jake gets in there so quick. And he's always, as we mentioned, one of the first guys upfield. And when that ball popped loose, I think they all saw it and they had that extra need to get back in there. And again, it's tough to see. It's Kendrick Harper on the fumble recovery. So Brock Long caused it, Kendrick Harper was able to recover it. And it looked like Jake dove for the ball carrier at the goal line and then maybe got rolled up on by an Omaha player. And he is down. He's still trying to get his wits about him as he's stretching out that left leg and trying to get it going there. The trainer's out looking at it. Travis Taylor is going to help him up along with Javier Dyer, a defensive line group sticking together here. But Jake is up, and we know Jake is a, is a guy that can take some pain. And he right now, he's in a lot of pain. wants to try to run it off yeah it's gonna to be tough it's gonna to be tough to keep him off the field so right, right. the officials looks like we're now going to have our second timeout all right 49 seconds left to go back and the liberty have a chance to extend this 14 point lead as we go to halftime, back with more after this on KINA. Ava, why are you staying in Mom's car? Because, Noah, I'm hungry. And every Monday we go to Rib Crib, where kids 12 and under eat free all day. Ava, Mom and Dad love their menu, and I like the ribs. Ava, they get my fingers gooey. <laughs> Ava, what, Noah? I like Mondays at Rib Crib, too. But today's Saturday. We're just a couple of days away. Two free kids' entrees with each adult entree purchase. All day Mondays at Rip Crib in Salina on South 9th in front of Lowe's. School goals out. Summertime's here, and it's never too early to plan for next fall. Especially at Salina Used Cars, where we have so many great school cars and rides for that summer job. Vehicles starting at $2,900 and over a dozen vehicles for under $9,900. Payments starting at $99 and 100% credit approval. Qualifications apply. Prices plus tax. See dealer for details. Visit both of our locations on the corner of Crawford and Ohio or visit us online 24-7 at SalinaUsedCars.com. You're listening to Champions Indoor Football on KINA. Back after our 60-second warning, there's actually 49 seconds left on the clock. And the Salina Liberty have two of their timeouts remaining. Had to take one early on in this contest. They got out of the gates a little bit slow on offense, but since then, their defense has given them a ton of momentum and really, really great field position. They've had two drives that started out at the five at via interception. This one's going to start out at the nine-yard line after a hit from Brock Long on the return man for Omaha. Jarred the football loose. Kendrick Harper comes in to pick it up. That's Kendrick's second takeaway of the game as he already has an interception. Now with that fumble recovery and the Liberty a chance here to extend their 14-point lead with 49 seconds left to go and two timeouts. The give is to Tracy Brooks off the left-hand side. Kamali Matthews, Kelvin McCoy leading the way, and it's another touchdown. No, the ball came loose. Here comes Omaha the other way back with it, and the Beef trying to return it back to the midfield strike. And Coach Ron O'Neill not even going to hesitate. He said, I want to challenge that play. Coach Ron O'Neill thinking maybe that Tracy Brooks was down. The official told Ron O'Neill, you can't challenge that. Now Ron O'Neill is very heated. Well, you should be able to challenge if a player was down or not. Oh, 
Delmar returned the football back to the 25 yard line. Actually, across midfield at the 24. And he is going to get his challenge. I don't know why the official was telling him he couldn't challenge it, but Tracy Brooks, the challenge is, Ron O'Neill thought he was down in the end zone. And why not? Yeah, and, and, and Coach would have a much better perspective than we were. We kind of were, there was such a crowd around that football from our vantage point that it's going to be tough for us to see. We're, we'll kind of wait for the uh, the replay to see if they'll able to be able to post that. Naturally, here in the arena right now, they're holding off on putting anything up on the board as the officials take a peek. One of the nice things about here at Ralston, the officials just watch the, uh, the replay from right here out on the field. Yeah, and really, as you said, Brian, our perspective, we couldn't see anything. We had a bunch of people between our vantage point and where Tracy Brooks was at. He was in a crowd. All of a sudden, well, when he, we knew, I thought Tracy Brooks was into the end zone, but we see an Omaha player turn it around and come back the other way. I believe it was Chris Perry maybe on that return coming out of there. I might be wrong on that. But this is a big, big call here. They're going to say it was a fumble for Tracy Brooks. That's just his second fumble of the season, if you can believe that. And we never saw a replay here in the arena. So Omaha now, a quick turn of fields, and they are going to show the replay in the arena. Oh, and it's very, very bad. They chopped it off. And, but the recovery, we get a chance to see who made that, is guess who? Trey Dudley. Well, what it looked like was that Tracy kind of went to lunge to dive over and the ball did come loose as he was hit. Now, the, where the problem lies, there's no end zone camera or angle across that goal line to see if he was actually over. Travis Taylor in there now, and it's going to be grounding, grounding against Derek Bernard. It has to be. Nobody's throwing their flag yet. Heron O'Neill is asking about it. And I can't believe they're not going to throw the flag on this. They're going to say he was outside of the pocket. Travis Taylor came storming in as they lined him up in the middle of that time. Omaha won the toss. They deferred, so they will get the ball to start the second half. Still 33 seconds left to go here for Omaha. They have three timeouts remaining. Bernard drops the snap. Here comes Taylor again. He's pushed down from behind. Bernard leaves the pocket. He's at the 20, 15, hit hard from behind by Naquan Thomas, and the helmet comes off. Bernard has to come out of the game unless they use a timeout here, correct? And they will burn a timeout. Omaha's going to take this timeout to keep Derrick Bernard in the game and to stop the clock after he lost his helmet. Bernard ran that football all the way down to the 9 from the 24. Again, that's one of the strengths of Derek Bernard. He leaves that pocket, not afraid to go forward with that football. So now first and goal from the nine-yard line, 24 seconds, so plenty of time. You're in your four-possession territory, so they'll easily get four plays off in 24 seconds. Four to twenty, our score. Salina trailed early in this one, and then three straight takeaways from their defense, all answered with offensive touchdowns. And Omaha trying to get some of those points back here before they go into the locker room for halftime. Twenty-four seconds left to play. Omaha sitting at the nine-yard line where it's first to go. High snap. Bernard can't hold it. Here comes Naquan Thomas in. Bernard gets away. Naquan to the end zone. It's a touchdown. Boy, the composure shown by Derek Bernard on that play was incredible. As he had that football go through his hands, he got the ball off the turf on a great bounce and then turned and found his receiver, Donovan Raspberry, in the end zone for a touchdown. What a play. Yeah, that was really the key was that bounce that came up off the carpet. Back up into his hands, he was just able to spin. Raspberry cut across the end zone for the six points. Dana Harris coming over. He put a hit on 
Derek Bernard, just as he let go of that football up against the wall, the extra point for Aravello is up and good. Well, now you've got 18 seconds prior to this upcoming kickoff, along with two timeouts. All right, Eric. We have exactly 18 seconds. So we'll see what Salina has the possibly what they can do. You know, we've seen some long strikes. One thing that they continue to work on, Andrew Jackson and his receiving core on those long balls. The question, you know, you're up by seven points. Do you possibly roll the dice after this kickoff and try to go deep, or are you just going to be content with going into halftime with the lead? Yeah, that's a good question. be interesting to see how it plays out here as there is still plenty of time especially with two timeouts remaining but I would think that the Salina Liberty only has one timeout remaining after that failed challenge probably right they have two on the board but that would make sense because they called that early timeout Play clock is running down in the first quarter. So back deep, Ed Smith has McKinney and Tracy Brooks with him. Ed's going to take it on the line drive at the two. Already out to the 10, 15, 20, 25 across midfield, and now flag by everywhere on this play as there were bodies going all over the place. Obob trying coming in trying to take right, Ed Smith right. Jr. down and the Liberty just picking off blocks every now and then but it looks like there might have been a bad one made. Yeah it looks like one official saying holding pointing in the direction of Salina. I think if that return stands that's your question or your answer to your question of if they would be aggressive here trying to score. Say both these penalties against the return team. Have two holding calls on one on each. All right, uh, Travis Taylor and Winston Green. Of course, they can only take one of them, but it's going to go back to the deepest part of the field where they were at. That's the penalty flag laying at the 17-yard line, so then it's going to go back from there, half the distance to the goal. So just seven seconds left to go now. You may take one shot all the way down the field here if you're the Liberty, but you want to make sure that you have your coverage team, if you should throw an interception, ready to make a tackle. They could just safe hand it off to Tracy Brooks. He is in the backfield. Two receivers in motion. Jackson back to pass. Out left-hand side to Craig. Matthew Craig back to the middle of the field. He'll be tackled at the 15. And it looks like time has expired. Ron O'Neill walking it off the field. It looks like that's going to be the end of the first half. And what a first half it was. Omaha comes out early. They establish a 7 to nothing lead. And now hang on a second. Ron O'Neill saying he called a timeout with one second left. So we're think, not quite at halftime yet. Yeah, I think they're going to go look to see. Oh, boy. I mean, to me, it looked like the tackle was made with one second left. Now, did Coach O'Neill get that timeout called in time? Well, I'll tell you, the confusing part for me on that play was it looked like Matthew Craig had caught the ball and, and then turned the and held it over the wall. Right. And then he came off the wall and kept running. Once he gives it, holds it over the wall, as you know, that's a dead ball, and the clock should stop at that point inside the last 60 seconds. Yeah, he made that, but he also then made that motion of turning back into the field, so... Strict judgment call. If they have that timeout, if if there is one second left, Jimmy Allen's already out on the field. You know, we we know Jimmy's got he's got the leg to make it from this distance. The officials looking at this, seeing if there's any time remaining, and it is a group effort. The White Hat pulling in both of the guys on each side of him. To look at this one and everybody weighing on their thoughts. I, I, I will say this: this 
this arena, you know, hats off to these guys because they have one of these better camera crews in the league to help provide all the feeds for the officials to watch and view. Here's our ruling. chance on a return with Chris Perry back deep. Tracy Brooks will put this one down at the eight. Calvin McCoy ready to snap it back to Tracy Brooks. It's a 50-yard attempt. Good snap. Placement down. Kick is up. It's curling left, and it misses to the left-hand side, and we are at the half. So finally, at the end of the first half, officially, 34-27 is our score. Salina leading Omaha. Omaha scheduled to get the football when we come back to start the second half. As Ron O'Neill and his guys all going to the locker room. Omaha crossing over the other way. They're going to their locker room. And a good half of football. 34-27 is our score when we come back after this timeout. We will sit down and have a chat with Ricky Burtz, the Commissioner of Champions Indoor Football. That's all coming up. Brought to you by Precision Electric. At the half, Salina leads Omaha 34-27 right here on KINA. All right, here we go. Steve C's car. like Peyton Manning and Des Bryant have used PRP therapy for sports injuries and to avoid surgery. But you don't have to be a world-class athlete with millions of dollars for this cutting-edge therapy. PRP is available to you in the Salina Pain Clinic. Call the doctors for a consultation and see if this treatment is right for you. See them at 200 South 5th in the Salina Surgical Arts Center. Summertime is the best time to upgrade and invest in your home. During the recent storms, have you noticed your garage door leaking? Or even worse, has your garage door left you out in the rain? Overhead Door Company of North Central Kansas wants to help you stay dry and save money. This month, save $100 on a new garage door and opener installed by the experts at Overhead Door. Increase your home's value and save money with Overhead Door Company of North Central Kansas in Salina and McPherson or online at ODC in CK. Think about the word precision. Precision represents quality and the fact of being exact and accurate. Isn't that what you want when it comes to electrical? Precision Electrical Contractors in Salina brings exact and accurate quality to electrical jobs in Central Kansas since 2003. Precision Electric's focus on quality and performance, combined with their experience and dedication, creates a winning set of finished products which saves their customers money. Don't rely on so-so electrical. Visit the team at Precision Electrical Contractors online at PECSalina.com. <laughs> this is the Liberty Halftime Report. Coming up, a first half recap, stats, interviews, and a look at other CIF games. Now let's head back to the arena for Liberty Halftime on KINA. And welcome back to Halftime. Salina of Liberty at Omaha. We're at the Ralston Arena. And the pleasure is ours right now to have the head man of the league, the commissioner, the number one guy, Ricky Burtz, with us. I don't know. What, what else can I say? Head honcho, I don't know number if it's one the, guy. I don't know if it's the number one guy. You're probably, uh, if you look at it upside down, I'm the number one guy on the bottom because everything <laughs> rolls downhill. But, uh, well, that's that's true. That's that's part of it. But, uh, um, you know, we we've, we know, uh, have had the opportunity over the years to, to get to know you here on, on Liberty Football. And uh, basically, it's the first time we've had to catch up with you to see how things are going in the uh, – one, a new city for you, but uh, mainly in the in the continued role as, as league commissioner. How, in your opinion, has the uh, the season been going so far? Um, I think that, uh, you know, as the season's about to wrap up for the regular season, we get lucky every single year. 
where it always seems like we're able to kind of come down to like the last week or two that the games actually mean something, you know. Now, uh, in the South, of course, uh, we had this situation with the Texas Revolution that kind of spoiled everything. But for the North, it's uh, it's really exciting. And, you know, I mean, Brian, we just get lucky every single year because uh, I believe, I mean, don't quote me if I'm – I mean, I think this the schedule that we're on was like the 11th or 12th version of the schedule that we did for the 2019 season. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we just get lucky every single year. We're actually able to have some games that mean something from a playoff standpoint, a positioning standpoint, and tonight's game is no different. So I just don't know. It's just nothing but luck, and we got lucky again yet again yeah, this year. Yeah, to, to really look at it, uh, you know, when, when you look at uh, uh, Omaha, Salina, Sioux City, you know, basically – these two weeks are playoff games for all three teams, and and uh, you know, you probably you as you said you couldn't have drawn it out any better than uh, than this. No, I think that uh, every team, I think that uh, every team um, has the ability to be the number one seed or be completely out of the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken, between those three. So. Yeah, it's it, you know it's it definitely makes for an exciting season, and uh, let, let's talk. You know. We've got to mention it, uh, you know, the Texas situation, a team that, uh, you know, I, I think everybody always had high expectations for the the news when, hey, they're going to play at the star and, you know, Jerry's house and all, all these things. But uh, things just kind of unraveled for that team. And then was it did you see it coming or was it just kind of like all of a sudden you get this phone call and say, you know, we don't don't have the ability to keep going? You know, um, I actually read a great article on ESPN, Brian, um, about the uh, – they did a, an article with uh, Charlie Ebersol and the demise of the AAF. Okay. Um, and so when the new ownership took over for the revolution and them going the star and everything else, I mean, like you, we were just – I mean, our players were pumped having an opportunity right. to go there. I mean, we actually uh, – they had to move one of their games from a Saturday to a Monday because of the rookie camp. And so, I mean, it's just, just stuff that just normally doesn't happen. So it was really exciting. But um, – but just like uh, I can't remember the name of the gentleman that uh, owns the Carolina Hurricanes that bought the right, AF. Right. Um, anyways, uh, guys worth billions of dollars, and uh, the gentleman that uh, purchased the Revolution and became the majority stakeholder in the team, um, he had the financial wherewithal and the money and everything else, but just, nah, just this is I don't want to do this anymore or whatever. Yes. And uh, it was uh, it was devastating to us as a league, um, devastating to us from multiple fronts. I mean, it hurts us from an expansion, league growth league stability standpoint um it wasn't a it wasn't a funding issue it just i just think the guy just no this is the one i thought it was going to be uh, kind of got into something and just kind of changed his mind similar to the, that alliance football league as well um so it just it definitely caught us off guard and you know i think that uh you know um people get involved in this business and they have a desire to want to do the right thing do things a certain way but they don't have the financial means or ability to do that and, uh, and I know that for us, from a vetting process, it goes into the, A, do you have the means? Because we kind of think the desire is secondary aspect. Nobody's going to invest this money in there without the desire of long. I mean, they have multiple reasons why they get into this. And uh, they had the means, but the guy that was a majority owner just didn't have the desire for whatever reason. So, But well, you are able to get, uh, you know, the, the dispersal draft. And, and uh, you know, it looked like a, a number of the players did have the opportunity, you know, to move on. I, I know you've been fortunate. Salina has been fortunate to uh, – to get some new additions from that. How has you, you look at expansion um, and I, it's up to you if you want to name any potential cities that might be out there is expansion on the horizon with some new teams coming in and how has the impact over the last two years with, with the Dallas Marshals and now Texas revolution in back to back years being in there, but then kind of dropping out how has that impacted any potential investors for new teams coming in? It hurts, to be honest with you, Brian. It really does hurt. Um, I would say uh, the situation with the revolution, you had somebody that had the means, and then uh, the Dallas Marshall situation really was an interesting set of dynamics on a transition of ownership during the season and with another existing owner from another uh, another team as well. Um, it makes things really difficult. I mean, it really does. Um, it's a tough business, but um, – at the end of the day, with it being minor league sports, I mean, the worst thing that you can have happen 
is have a game scheduled and then the person doesn't show on up. I mean, like we're sitting here having a game this evening between the Liberty and the Omaha beef. And I mean, for full transparency, it's always best when people know that. I mean, the Omaha beef are dependent upon the Salina Liberty to show up just like vice versa. When the beef went there to go play the Liberty, the worst thing in the world that can happen is, Hey, the day before a game or the day of a game, somebody doesn't show up for whatever reason. Um, we've been fortunate that we haven't had those situations because we do have some contingency plans in place, but, uh, Hopefully, uh, we're hope. I mean, hopefully, we can add uh, two or three teams. I mean, that's always like the goal every single year. Um, we get lots of inquiries, and um, I'd say probably, if anything, the last two years has taught us um, it's not just getting the inquiries and not adding people for the sake of adding people. You want to add the stable, solid foundation uh, ownership groups right. that have a business plan, a foundation to build upon, and that's probably more important. I mean. You know, I mean, we'd rather be a league of eight teams every single year coming back with those eight teams and then adding two, dropping three, adding one, losing two, or vice versa, whatever it might be. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I can't really go into the details of what those are. Um, we're, uh, we have some contract contractual um, limitations with uh, people that fill out the paperwork. They go both ways for us on that. But uh, we're really hopeful to be able to add, uh, hopefully, a couple teams for the 2020 season. But we'll have to see how it works itself Good. out. How, how is we, let's look at the, the most recent uh, expansion team that was out there with, with uh, the Oklahoma Flying Aces and, and uh, Richard Davis down there. You know, they, they haven't seen the success on, on the, uh, the scoreboard, the win-loss record. But how, in your opinion, have they proven themselves in year one? Do do you feel as a commissioner that uh, that's going to be a solid franchise uh, for the lake down there? Um, I, I'm hoping so. I mean, it's, um, in my opinion, the uh, the teams that seem to be the most successful are ones in smaller markets. And there's probably not a whole, I mean, I don't know the demographic difference between like Salina and uh, Enid, probably not probably, a whole lot different. Similar, yeah. um, and so I think that's where they're most successful at. And so I know that they have a plan down there. Things haven't gone exactly the way that they were hoping their first year, not only on right, the Alex, field, but off it as well. Um, I know that Richard is, uh, I mean, you want to talk about, I mean, I get stressed out All between right, running Alex. a team and being the league commissioner. I can't imagine running a team and being a head coach as well and everything else. The amount of stuff that guy has on his plate is unbelievable. But, uh, you know, I mean, we're really hopeful that uh, uh, the community embraces that team and they're one that's around for a long period of time for uh, not only, A, the league footprint, but for even the fans there as well. So, um, we're going to cross our fingers and hope that that's what happens for the 2020 season and beyond. Well, I know from a Salinas standpoint, we were we were a little disappointed we didn't get a chance to to, um, to play him this uh, this season. But well, uh, hopefully they're, they're really year. close. I can tell you, I know for a fact because uh, this was while I was in Salina, I did a couple versions of the schedule, and Francis and George were in the back helping me do that. Coach Martinez and. Uh, um, like I said, I think like the one that we're playing on now is like version 11 or version 12 and whatever teams lose dates, things move around. Um, heck, even uh, the original dates that we had for the revolution, we just talked about them with them going from the Dr. Pepper Center to the star and the date availability changed on that. It just, and you never get lucky. It's never like week 13 or 14, there's a change. It's always like week week one, two or three, and it just, it's a domino effect on everything for the rest and, of the year. And I think that's the one thing most, most fans don't understand or, or having, you know, Having been involved in scheduling in the past, uh, in, in my previous jobs, you know, I, I know what goes into it. But when you have to do it at a league level and then look at building availability and, and all those things that, uh, that go to it, it, it's never an easy task that goes. Um, Let's kind of talk. We, we, we talked potential playoffs. Let's talk playoffs now. Uh, we've got two teams locked in in the south. We have three potential teams here in the north. What is the playoff set uh, going to be? Do we have dates set up then uh, for semifinals and championships? Um, to my knowledge, in the north, um, the conference championship game will be played on the 29th, no matter what is the host team venue for that. Um, the championship game is the week after the 4th of July, so it would be July 13th, if I'm not okay. mistaken, going off the top of my head. And uh, just depending upon, like, some teams would have to play on a Friday, some would have to play on a Saturday or a Sunday, and that's even if the game's even played in the north. In the south, it's completely locked in. Um, it would be the, uh, if it was in the south of the, the league championship game, it would be on the, uh, the 13th in okay. the south. It's locked in there. But okay. in the north, I believe Sioux City's on a Friday, Salina's a Saturday, Omaha would be a Sunday, um, there's actually an indoor football game here on the right. 13th, the Omaha are playing here. Okay. So. so basically we're, we're looking into the regular season. Then uh, the following week we're going to look at uh, conference championships. And then two uh, weeks later. Two weeks after. So we'll have All that uh, right, two weeks of media blitz to, to go through and, and uh, 
hype this game up. Well, I think it'll be. A, I think it'll provide something different for us. It'll just give time, teams more time to plan, prepare. When you get to the end of the season, it's uh, it can be kind of brutal and wear and tear on bodies and stuff like that. So having that two week break, I think, will be beneficial for players. That way, you know, I mean, hey, you want to see a game where you've got the best of the best on both teams going. I think that's what the fans want. Exactly. And, uh, and that's what the coaches want, the players want. So The season was, was pushed back a little bit this year. Has that been a benefit, you think, uh, from the start? To um, at the end of the day, it's uh, at the end of the day, your arena availability is going to ultimately determine when you start the season. Okay. Um, you know, in the past, we've always tried getting done. We want to be done before the 4th of July weekend. Um, but this year, between uh, concerts, hockey being a big one, other stuff going on, some uh, college basketball as well, um, it just it was really difficult. You know, I mean, we had some teams, uh, I know, like Wichita and Duke City, for example, uh, they only gave it due to their arena availability. And I could be wrong which one it is, but they only gave us seven dates. Wow. And so whenever you were playing at least six home games, I mean, you know, I mean, your hands are really, really tied from a scheduling standpoint. So. Will you stick, let, let's say you, you mentioned eight teams, you know, if the league stays that way, do you stick with a 12-game schedule or do you look at, uh, you know, reducing that down to where each division plays home and home and then you play one game with the team from the other division? Is it beneficial to potentially reduce, go from 12 games to 10? Um, I think there's probably a catch-22 on both of those. Um, you have people that are, working on selling like season ticket packages, sponsorship packages and everything else based upon a set number of home games and stuff. Um, I mean, I'd say in a perfect world, in a perfect world, let's just say if there's eight teams in the league and uh, you play a home and away, just like you said, against everybody in your division, then yeah, you could possibly play a home and away somebody outside your division, your closest opponent, that'd give you a 10, you know, but uh, I mean, just I think 12 just kind of seems to be like the right fit is what it seems like in the past. Um, I think that uh, playing more than 12, it just gets to be too much. And then, of course, you sprinkle in some teams that have a preseason game mixed in there as well. Right. So, you know, that 10-12 game, I think that's probably a perfect fit in there somewhere. Um, we've been doing 12 for a while. seems to work pretty good for the most part. But uh, I would say our hope would be to maybe if we could push it back a week or two to start a little bit earlier in February. Um, but, again, that's kind of a catch-22 because just some teams just don't have the availability. Right. I know, like, uh, one of our playing partners – um, they have a hockey tenant. They have holds on playoff games and everything else. They can't play a game until uh, late March. And right. so if we, we kick off the middle of February, I mean, that's almost a month yeah, and a half. State basketball in Salina and Salina. It's, it's, it's a challenge, yeah. we, we We totally understand. Well, Ricky, I, we, you know, we appreciate uh, your time here as, you know, we're, we're a few hours from kickoff. But uh, uh, we know in, in the, the hectic schedule of, of commissioner and owner, it, it's something that uh, uh, we – wanted to grab you as, as quick as we can so we appreciate your time and uh, you know good luck the rest of the uh, the season here and and as we wind this season down through the championships and uh, you know getting things rolling for 2020 hey brian appreciate it as always man halftime from salina liberty at the ralston arena we'll be back with second half action on 910 kina from Pebble Beach, Westwood One Sports presents this special report on the U.S. Open. Gary Woodland probably should be leaking oil in the third round, but he chipped in for par at 12. At 14, he went rough to rough along the fairway and stood over a 40-foot putt to make par. Slightly downhill to the hole, moving right to left. Has a chance, raises the putter, and in it goes. Another incredible par save from Gary Woodland. He remains at 11 under par. These are the shots that win U.S. Opens. John McGinnis with the call on Sirius XM. Woodland 11 under with a two-shot lead over Justin Rose, who did pick up a shot with a birdie at 14. Both Woodland and Rose made par at the 15th. Brooks Kepka in the clubhouse with another round in the 60s, a three under 68, yet it left a lot to be desired. As he wasted a few more birdie chances, Kepka is seven under four back, so is Ches Reby. Tiger Woods, even par. Phil Mickelson shoots a four over 75, now plus three. From the U.S. Open, I'm Ted Emmer. Westwood One Sports. Sarcoma. Odds are you've never heard that word before. For the 40 people diagnosed with sarcoma every day, it is a life-changing word. Because sarcoma is cancer. Through awareness, advocacy, and research, the Sarcoma Foundation of America is bringing hope to the families whose lives have been turned upside down by a cancer they had never heard of until diagnosis. Please join us in the fight to find the cure for sarcoma. For more information on the work of the Sarcoma Foundation of America, go to curesarcoma.org.
Diabetes.org. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit beefy, or even with type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Affordable term life insurance is out there. Call term provider and speak with Big Lou at 800-481-1458. 800-481-1458 or visit BigLou.com. Remember, Big Lou's like you. The Liberty plays here. Here, Salinas Sports Station is KINA. Back here at Ralston Arena as we round out the halftime festivities here. We just heard from League Commissioner Ricky Burtz and halftime score. Salina leading Omaha 34 to 27. We're about a minute and a half away from kicking off and getting ready to go here in the third quarter, Brian. And this was a back and forth first half of action. Omaha comes out, they strike first. After stopping the Liberty on the opening drive of the game, Omaha goes down. They score on a Derek Bernard rushing touchdown. They go up 7 to nothing. but the Liberty would come back. They would answer that with a pass to Ed Smith Jr. on a big third down play where he would take the football off the pads of Trey Dudley, who was covering. Extra point from Jimmy Allen to make that 7 to 7. Then Derek Bernard would run another one in, make it 13 to 7 after Salina blocked the extra point. Salina. Liberty would pass their second touchdown of the night to Daniel McKinney, make a 34 to 20. And then the last score of the half was a Derek Bernard pass into Donovan Raspberry. Extra point would make it 34 to 27. And that's where we'd sit here at the half. It's been a fun half. Really, it brought us everything we expected it to. Both teams hard hitting action going back and forth. We knew turnovers were going to be a key. We've seen it from both sides and we've seen it result in points from both sides one of the big questions right now you know we're curious as to jake latimer the status of him really it doesn't look good we're not seeing him back out out on the field is uh, the teams are, are warming up again it, it looked like he just went shin to shin and that can be such a painful thing to go through i don't think we'll see him my gut feeling is we won't see him the remainder uh, of this contest Keep your fingers crossed that it, uh, it's nothing too bad and that uh, he can bounce back and be with us uh, next Saturday. I think we talk enough about Jake Latimer and his value to this team, but when you look at what I like to call OG Liberty players that were here from day one, Jake Latimer is one of them. He is right now fourth on the team in total tackles. We're already playing without Isaiah Barfield tonight are the Liberty. He is third on the team in total tackles. So that would be two of your top four tacklers out of the game here with Barfield and Latimer both not playing if Jake doesn't return. Yeah, the, the one thing that I think can help out with that is the addition back of Brock Long. Yeah, I think Brock, having been out for a few weeks, he came, he's played some inspired football. He's, he made a, a couple great shoestring tackles. He had a big hit to cause a turnover there in the second quarter. And so we'll probably see Brock kind of step in and help out a little bit more in that linebacker role here in the second half. A couple scores to pass along. Sioux City in the third quarter, ahead of Oklahoma 34-24. That down in Enid, and down at Intrust Bank Arena in Wichita, it's Amarillo with a 44-14 lead over the Wichita Force. Here at Ralston Arena, just outside of Omaha, it's 34-27. The Salina Liberty leading by a touchdown. They will kick off to the Omaha Beef as we get ready to start the second half of action. Glad you could join us wherever you may be, be listening. If it's on the video stream of Pluto TV or back at home, 910KINA or 107.5 FM or SolanaPost.com, welcome along. This has been a great game. If the Liberty can get out of here with a victory, they will clinch the North Division title. We have 30 minutes left to go to see if that should happen or not. Here's the return by Omaha. And a flag comes flying in from midfield on the return from Chris Perry. Perry made it just past the 15-yard line. The left check flag, it appears to be on the Omaha beat. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be holding against Omaha. And my 
high credit to that official because that was easily about a 23-yard flag toss. Yeah, good work by this officiating crew tonight. They've, you know, no, no calls ever go the way of of whichever team you're team you're the fan of. But they've done a done a good job keeping things under control because these two teams. They know the implications. Both teams coming out and playing hard tonight. It's an illegal block in the back against Omaha. That will back the beef up now to their own seven-yard line where we will start the first drive of the third quarter. Derek Bernard with a running back on his left hip. Two receivers in motion. It is a running play, and it goes to Calvin Phillips, who stumbles down after the handoff, and he will get maybe a yard on the play and not much more than that. Looked like Phillips had trouble getting out of the starting blocks. Yeah, it's more like he just kind of, kind of hit a uh, little little bump in the turf there took himself down before he made contact with any of the Liberty players Phillips a guy you definitely don't want to have get positive momentum and get rolling downhill so to speak he can get yards in a hurry Bernard back to pass under pressure Naquan Thomas in there on the blitz Derek Bernard at the last second tried to fling it out to Phillips in the flat on the left hand side and it's just a little bit overthrown and out of bounds now third down and 10 and coming up for the Salina Liberty defense. Omaha trying to pick it up. Omaha's picked up some big third down conversions in this game. When you look at it, though, over the season, they are not very good on third down. They're dead last in the league on third down conversions. That's a nice stat. Did Thank you, you Russ Gossel. There. there you go. Make sure, make sure credit goes to your statistician. Third and ten. Bernard with an empty backfield. Here comes a blitz from Naquan Thomas. They complete it over the middle, and it's going to be short. Nice tackle in on the play by the converted wide receiver, now defensive back for this game, Anthony Jones. Jones came in, made the tackle, kept the receiver from getting the line to gain, and it's going to be three yards shy of a first down. That'll bring up fourth down, now in a long three-yard line, and the Omaha kicking team coming on as they will bring on Zeke Aravallo just to try to get this extra point. Keep in mind, though, Derek Bernard is the holder for all of their kicking attempts, so we have seen fakes in the past. Never a turn man back deep. Remember the low trajectory. They snapped this. Bernard took off running. I think they're going to have to call a timeout because they were short of player. Yeah, they're still trying to run people on here. Also, when you look at the Liberty sideline, Coach Ron O'Neill is trying desperately to get the gate open to get off the field. But now standing there as if nothing happened. <laughs> but I don't know that that play was ever whistled to go. I mean, we've seen this a lot with Omaha. Right, right. They love to kind of hurry up. Now, here's the thing. Well, I, I'm as confused as anybody right now. So White Hat comes across, he'll make a call. is a five-yard penalty against Omaha. It's a, quote, substitution foul where they did not have enough people in the game. Therefore, they did not have enough people on the line of scrimmage, I believe. So that'll back up now all the way to the goal line. Well, Derek Bernard will put this one down for Zeke Aravalo. Placement is down on the goal line. Low line drive kick is curling, going, and it's going to be returned. Here comes Kendrick Harper out to the 5 to the 10, looking for blocks of the flag down, and Kendrick Harper zigzags his way up the middle of the field to the 13-yard line where he is brought down. Boy, that looked like it had a chance to go, Brian, and then Kendrick Harper plucked it from down low on the crossbar. Yeah, pulled it back, kind of went over the board. It looks like a, they may call Matthew Craig. Or make that Winston Green, I think. It's going against Winston Green. That is going to be a legal block in the back now against the Salina Liberty. So that'll back them up after the Harbor return on the missed field goal by Aravalo. And now the trainer out to check in on the defensive lineman who came up slow on the play for Omaha, Kwame Bell. Bell shakes off the trainer, says, I'm okay, and he's going to stay in there on his left and defensive end spot to start this drive for the Salina Liberty. 12.43 left to go, third quarter, 34-27, Liberty leading, and they start from back inside their own five-yard line. 
Argo in motion on the outside. Jackson back to pass. Flings it in the middle of the field. It's to Ed Smith who takes a big collision from behind. Chris Perry came in and hit him hard in the back. But Smith hangs on to the football out to the 15-yard line. And the former Tiger from Fort Hayes gets a first down for the Liberty. Now the official tried to take the ball back towards the line of scrimmage. The original line of scrimmage. They get things set, bring it back to the 15. That time, that route was run perfectly underneath where Perry's only option is to come back. Pitch out right-hand side. Tracy Brooks on first down. Tracy gets through the first crease. Now on the second level, Trey Dudley will take him down against the wall, the 23-yard line. And just that explosion from Tracy Brooks. Boy, you know, the first thing and, and the foremost thing you have to do is secure that football on the pitch because it is a quick-hitting play. But once he has that bad boy tucked away, look out. Tracy just continues to impress with the explosiveness that he has to get through the middle. That time going out around the edge. Desmond Reed also involved in that tackle for the Omaha Beef. Eight yards on first down, brings up second down and two. Liberty pushing towards the midfield stride. Jackson back to pass, clean pocket. Andrew still dancing around, now he lets it fly. It's to the end zone, and Daniel McKinney in double coverage leaps up, tries to make the play, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds and actually thrown out of bounds. And on the coverage on the play that time for the Omaha Beef was Taylor Hawkins along with Trey Dudley. Have a flag down. It's like holding against, holding against the line of Kamali Matthews. And again, down on the field, slow to get up for Omaha's Kwame Bell. Should be second down here. The officials are saying third down. It should be second down. Coach O'Neill gets it fixed. Second down and 12. dare give somebody an extra down in the state of Nebraska, do you? Boy, that brings back bad memories. <laughs> Jackson back to pass on second long. Wants to go to the sideline. He has McKinney again. McKinney brings it in at the 20, 15, 10. Carries that football to the outside inside the five, and he's brought down against the wall again near the goal line. Daniel McKinney asking for a flag as he felt he was hit late up against the wall. But another big run after catch by flag. Daniel McKinney. A flag down way back at the offensive backfield off to the side of the 15-yard line. Holding, Holding on, the on the defense. Wow. Boy, that could be a multitude of things, Brian. It could be up front on the defensive line. It could be as a, on a defensive back. But that was a really, really nice pass by Andrew Jackson. Over the top of the defensive back, finding Daniel McKinney, who then finished off the run and nearly had his third touchdown of the night. Yes. Watching down at Kamali Matthews, he's been very animated. His last couple series of plays, once he was called for a hold. And this last time, I think he might have been the one that was being held. Margo goes in motion. The handoff is to Tracy Brooks. Bounces off one blocker, bounces off a tackler, and into the end zone. He lost the football again, but the Liberty recover it as Tracy Brooks had already broken the play. And we weren't so sure if that wasn't the case on the first fumble tonight for Tracy Brooks. But this one is good and a touchdown. And again, Kamali Matthews very, very heated about what's going on across the line from him. And Daniel McKinney coming over to calm him down. And now Coach Ron O'Neill getting in on it. And Kamali's upset. He's upset, and he's usually not that way, so it's got to be something, you know, big getting into him. That's going to the end zone to pick up what looks like might be his mouthpiece, and he is still jawing at the Omaha defense. I would not want to be on the other end yeah, of those blocks. I, boy, I don't know who that's all directed at, but he is upset. Jimmy Allen on for the extra point. Try to put 41 on the board and put the Liberty back up by 14. There's the kick. It is up and it's good. And Dana Harris this time looks like maybe going to bat for Kamali Matthews and shoving off one of the Omaha offensive linemen. So Travis Taylor comes off the bench. He's telling his guys to calm down a little bit. 
as they look at the scoreboard and find themselves up by 14. Well, that's the thing. You know, you're in a, the situation. You're in the hostile territory anyway, out on the road. The implications that this game has, you've got the lead. Keep your emotions in check. Don't risk getting those unsportsmanlike penalty calls. You know, I think Cavalli's on the edge from the standpoint. He definitely has the attention of the officials. Well, and we're at that time, he's, time of year right now. If things should happen, and you have a guy get a couple of unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, that not only affects this game, but it affects next week. Right. So you definitely have to be aware of that. Hopefully cooler heads prevail. Probably one of the best things for Kamali right now is he gets to go rest on the bench a little bit. He's going to head back into the tunnel area. I'm sure there's one or two of his teammates back there with him. Jimmy Allen and his kicking unit out onto the field. Jimmy having a solid night. One extra point left on the field, but that was a bad snap, but the kick never was attempted. I talked to him at halftime about that missed field goal that, you know, kind of pulled over. He said from his perspective, it was on target, then just took that bend right at the end. And one of the things with these indoor balls, you've got to hit them spot on as a kicker, or else you will get some false bends in them. This is a sidewinder kick that goes back into the end zone. It's going to be taken by Javon Bell, and Bell barely makes it out to the five-yard line. Probably didn't, but that's where they're going to start the drive anyway as the tackle made by Winston Green on special teams as he comes through. We've seen some really, really good special team play. I asked Ron O'Neill in pregame, what was the biggest thing that stuck out to him? Other than the defensive performance in that 20-point win two weeks ago against Omaha, he said our special teams did everything right. The kickoffs, the kick coverage, they never let anybody from Omaha get going in the return game, and it looks that way a little bit here again tonight. Yeah, and that's the thing. You, you get that team started. The worst you can start is at the five-yard line. If you can get them back in there inside the 10 each time, that, that's a win to start those drives. 10-10 left to go here, third quarter, two touchdown lead, and Omaha jumps off sides. Now they have a bad snap, but this play is going to be blown dead on an illegal procedure play. Receiver for Omaha off sides. He tried to slam on the brakes. It looked like it was Donovan Raspberry that time, but he just he already passed the line of scrimmage and he was committed. He was overcommitted, stopped, and all you can do is just turn around and look and say, hey, why didn't you guys snap the ball when you <laughs> when you should have? So that'll go half the distance to the goal and we'll go back to the two and a half yard line. I think everybody that watches this game questions what's offside, what isn't when you have those those receivers in motion so fast. Here's the inside handoff. It'll go to Phillips this time. Calvin collides with a couple of defensive players for the Liber Liberty. It's seven and eight. It'll be Thomas and Taylor as they take him down back at what was the original line of scrimmage before the penalty. Now it's going to be second down and ten. Dyer, the left end right now, with the absence still of Jake Latimer. Taylor is on the right end, and Chris May is clogging up the middle for that Liberty defensive line. Naquan Thomas is your linebacker right now in the middle of the field for the Liberty. All four receivers on the left-hand side. Low snap, Derek Bernard. Looks like he wanted to take off and run with it. Now he's going to pass it to the last moment. It's going to be caught middle of the field into Salina territory, and a nice catch by Kane Farquharson. He takes it across the 25, and another last split-second decision by Derek Bernard that works out brilliantly. It's a name you haven't called much tonight. Right. And Probably. he had a really good game against Salina two weeks he ago. Did. Just when you think you have Bernard pinned back, he goes and makes such a good play. There's the fake end around. It's a read option play. Bernard's going to keep it. He's hit hard. Thomas from behind. Green. Coming in from a safety spot will stop him short of the 15-yard line. Still positive gain for about seven yards from Derrick Bernard on that first down play. We'll bring up second down, and we'll call the three while sitting at the 16-yard line. We haven't talked a lot about Anthony Jones over there playing defensive back, and I think that's probably a good thing, don't you? He's he, doing a good job. He really has. They were keen on that position towards that direction early on the game, but... There's Phillips on the end of the round, trying to get that play ran. Bernard gets in there. He gets a tackle. Phillips still on his feet. He drops the football. 
fumble. Liberty have it. Phillips on his feet was doing a really nice job of reversing field, getting back the other way and breaking off a big chunk of yardage. But yet Omaha coughs it up again. Another fumble, and it's going to be taken in. Liberty Travis, recover. Looks like Travis Taylor might have been the one that just stripped that ball away. You know, Phillips is such a big back. Comes over to that right side. Spins around, got a couple good blocks, one included from Derek Bernard. Then as he was going Anthony down, Jones. Anthony Jones stripped it away. And Travis Taylor was in the area because Bernard tried to lay a block on him, pushed him towards the running back, and that's how Travis Taylor ended up there. So ben. you have Anthony Jones, the converted wide receiver, a play on defense. Yeah, bend don't break. That's the kind of the motto that this defense has had. There's Jackson now. He's going to have a quick pass left-hand side, Pargo. And that is Rashad's second catch of the night. He's been pretty quiet this game, Brian. Yeah, had a couple receptions in the first half. But again, it looks, you know, maybe they're trying to key a little bit more. He's one of the, the guys that I think you fear the most. Now with the addition of, of McKinney, that definitely helps take some of the pressure off and spreads things out a little bit. Jackson now, second down. Back pedals into the end zone. He's going to let it go. In the area was Ed Smith Jr. as Jackson went all the way to the back of the end zone. And he was forced to get rid of that football. So now a third down and long coming up for the Liberty offense. This is a big play here from the standpoint. You don't want to put Jimmy Allen out to try another long field goal. Third down and seven. Liberty need to get across the 15-yard line for a new set of downs. Empty backfield, four wide receivers. Jackson being chased. There's a flag on the play. And now the ball thrown out in the flat on the left-hand side. Coming in, trying to make a play on it was Trey Dudley, but that ball had already hit the ground. Yeah, the, the Let's see what the flag is. Yeah, if it's, if it's a hold in the end zone, it would be a safety. is actually at the three-yard line, so I don't think it's in the end zone. Omaha wanted some intentional grounding. So this is a holding call. It's going to go on left tackle Isaiah Trussell. And they're going to bring... No, they're not. Jimmy Allen came out, but it's going to replete third down after they accept the penalty. So the ball now will go back to the four-yard line where it's third down and 11. I'm really surprised you'd accept the penalty. You wonder about that, don't you? Incomplete pass. So Omaha now will change their minds, and they will decline the penalty. That'll be now bring Jimmy Allen out. So the football's going to stay. At the eight-yard line, instead of going back half the distance to the goal of the four, and it will give Jimmy Allen a little bit more space here to get this kick off, but not much. Yeah, it does. What I could, what I could see Jimmy probably doing in this situation with the lead that Salina has is probably try to angle this ball out of bounds, hopefully inside the, the 15, 10-yard line area. Calvin McCoy, Tracy Brooks have to execute their end of it first. McCoy, snap back to Brooks. They do their job. Allen's kick, sidewinding to the left-hand side, and he's going to plant it in the stands where it is taken in there by one of the fans. And some people will ask, well, why do you do that? Why do you, why do you not try to make that field goal? Chances of you making that field goal, I don't care who you are, is really kind of ridiculous. The other thing is you got a bunch of big offensive linemen in there that have to go down and cover a kick if you leave in the field of play. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's you, you don't have your type of coverage team out there on the field, so good call, good play, good spot, I think, for Salina. Media timeout. We'll take a 6-19 left to go third quarter. 41-27, Salina leading Omaha here on KINA. The name is J.J. Lawn Care, but don't let the name fool you. It's not just lawns they care about, it's their customers. J.J. Lawn Care is a locally owned business that works with people in and around Salina on more than just lawns. The spring season is here, and now is the time to act for a healthy, lush lawn. Call now for a free estimate on a four- or six-step program. Let J.J. Lawn Care come to the rescue for your fescue. Mm -hmm. Give them a call today, 820-7728. J.J. Lawn Care, caring for more than just your lawn. 
your street plumbing, heating, and electric in Salina and Lincoln, you'll be making a great decision. Providing full-service plumbing and HVAC, they have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. They work with you throughout the project to ensure you get the personalized service you deserve from licensed and insured technicians. Excellent customer service in Central Kansas since 1985. The experienced team will clean the premises once the job is done. Street Plumbing, Heating, and Electric. Know them better at streetphe.com. Dads always pay and never get anything free. Well, Elite Sports Paintball and Airsoft is out to change that with Father's Day free play. Bring Dad out for free admission, free equipment rental, and 200 paintballs for free. Everyone else gets equipment and 500 paintballs for just 25 bucks. Low impact, so everyone can have more fun. Get off the couch and do something fun with Dad. Father's Day free play this weekend, Saturday 10 to 6, and Sunday 11 to 5 at Elite Sports Paintball and Airsoft south of Salina. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. Big Sam Pretty is producing and engineering tonight's contest at the Salina Liberty on the road in Omaha to take on the B. Ryan Berter along with Devin Haney as we are midway through the third quarter. 619 left to go. 41 to 27. The Salina Liberty trying to protect this lead and build their way towards a North Division Championship once again. Nothing is ever safe in an indoor arena game. No. Just down in front of us. Some of the ball girls tossing footballs up to the fans. The guy was walking across in front of us. And Omaha's going to start this possession out at the 25-yard wow. line. Yeah. Interesting. They moved the ball up 10 yards. Derek Bernard under the blitz, and he's going to be sacked from behind. Dana Harris comes storming in. Naquan Thomas was also in there, but it was Harris with that big right hand, reached out, took a swipe, and dropped Derek Bernard from behind. That's a loss on the play of six yards for the Liberty defense. First sack of the night. Boy, that's a big play. You wonder about Jake Latimer not being in this game, but the depth on that defensive line is something to speak of. Right now, it's Javier Dyer, Dana Harris in the middle, and Travis Taylor on the right end. Here's Bernard back to pass again. They're going to dump it off. Phillips in the middle of the field, makes a spin move at the 22. Cross midfield to 25 to the other 20, and brought down just inside of that 20-yard line. They get back a good chunk of yardage once again. They make about 11 yards on that play. Now it's going to be third down and five. Again, that little dump off to Calvin Phillips. The things that he's able to do without, uh, you know, after he gets that catch. Kind of wonder in the back of his mind, after having that last ball stripped away from him on the previous possession. Big third down here for the beat. Bernard, quick pass in the middle of the field, and it's dropped. Donovan Raspberry had it coming in high at the face mask level and a little bit hot, and he was unable to catch that. Now a fourth down coming up, and it looks like Omaha not interested in their kicking game at all. They're going to leave the offense on the field. Yeah, down by 14. Try to go after as many points as possible. Well, they are going to make a last day decision. that. So Aravalo comes in with 15 seconds left on the play clock, and he's trying to get the ball lined up. Yeah, they move. Reposition. Now I think they're going to call timeout. Yeah, turning around to the official, wanting a timeout, it's Desmond Reed. So that will be the first Omaha timeout of the second half. 414 left to play, and also give Harad O'Neill a chance to maybe talk about the potential for a fake here, but Aravalo already moved the football, and once you do that, yeah, they're committed. the fake cannot go. They're committed to kicking. Now it's a situation of trying to get the pressure in. Again, something we talked about, the low trajectory that Aravalo has. The guy was a senior in college back in 2002. In the life of a kicker, you know, you look at the Sebastian Genikowskis and some of those guys, you know, they kick up into latter stages. But the wear and tear on that leg, you lose something. And when you lose the ability to get the ball up high quick, you can still get the distance, but you line drive it a little bit more. And that's kind of what Aravello has done. 
Bernard with the hold. Back at the 23-yard line. Placement is down. The kick is up. Arabalo, and it won't go. It curls. Almost found its way between the uprights, but it misses just to the right of the right-hand post, and it's no good. And that'll bring us to our second media timeout of the third quarter as the Liberty will take over at the five when we come back leading 41-27 to right here on KINA. Area athletes. Led by orthopedic surgeon Dr. Timothy Hawks and sports medicine physician Dr. Matthew Pyle, along with an A team of certified athletic trainers and physical therapists, Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic supports five area high schools, providing their athletes the highest quality, most timely care. At the school, on the field, or in our clinic, we're ready wherever and whenever you need us to help you get back in the game and keep you in the game. Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. The home field advantage starts here. Visit us at SalinaRegionalSportsMedicine.com. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. Back quickly after that timeout, a handoff to Cargo. No gain on the play. Now it's second down and 10 from the five. Jackson back to pass, looking downfield. Let's one fly. Left hand hash. He has a receiver, and it's caught. Touchdown, Liberty. Rashad Pargo did it again all the way down the field, 45 yards in his 19th receiving touchdown of the year. He is now tied Dell Davis for the Gladiators of Duke City for the league lead in touchdown receptions. Looking over his shoulder into the LED lights the whole way through and comes up with it in the end zone. Andrew Jackson just dropped that ball perfectly into Rashad Pargo. Rashad just kind of dove to the side. Momentum carries him into the end zone. Ball tucked away as he hit the ground. Six points. Impressive play for the Liberty. Boy, you're not kidding. Extra point by Jimmy Allen off the right upright, and then it bounces out. Officials say no good. Nonetheless, it's still a 20-point game, 47-27. to 27. After the touchdown reception, by Rashad Pargo. That was just, that was such a nice touch by Andrew Jackson. And again, who's your go-to guy? Generally, it's Rashad Pargo. Got the receiver beat, got a step on him, and that's really all it took. Jackson just puts that ball out in front to where he's able to dive out. Ball into the end zone. The fourth passing touchdown of the night for Andrew Jackson. You and I were talking a little bit before the game. I don't know that I've ever covered a team that we didn't talk that much about a quarterback. He's just kind of quiet. He's a guy that goes out. He's very reserved. He does his job. He's very businesslike on game day. But the numbers he has put up this year are absolutely phenomenal now. He has 48 touchdowns against just 10 interceptions, and he has played very, very well. And it passes like that. You're backed up at your own five. It's third down and 10, and all of a sudden you're putting six points on the board. Yeah, it, it, Andrew is such an impressive guy. It really wasn't until up in Sioux City when we got a chance to sit down and visit with him. You find out how quiet he is. But he's just got that confidence about it. Just day in and day out. And he takes it and carries it with him out on the field. There's the kick by Jimmy Allen. It goes all the way back to the wall, and it comes off the wall. That's perfect. It's going to be picked up, though, by Chris Perry. Ran out to the 5, to the 10, and then brought down by, again, Anthony Jones, who's playing pretty good. If you had told somebody that he was a receiver coming into this building, they'd probably argue with you. He looks pretty good as a defensive player in this game. Yeah, if, you, you know, if there's one name that you probably called more than another tonight, Anthony Jones' name is right up there towards the top. Again, they fix on him early, but really since the midway point of that, that first quarter, they've kind of spread that ball out and say, you know what, this guy isn't, uh, isn't going to be as easy to go against as we thought he might be. This third quarter right now being owned by the Liberty. Three minutes left to go. Derek Bernard and the Omaha offense back out onto the field. 
He's going to throw it right-hand side. Has a receiver. It's caught at the 20. As Kendry Harper makes the tackle and the catch made by Javon Fell. First down, Omaha. They move it into the slot to the side of the field. Derek Bernard trying to get everybody hurried up here as he is going to, again, split these receivers with no running back and have two receivers on each side. Snap back to Bernard, knee high, looking down the middle of the field. Takes a couple of steps to his left, now lets it fly again. Almost picked off by Dontre Matthews. The ball hung in the air right around Donovan Raspberry, who was the intended receiver before it finally hit the turf. If Dontre comes away with that ball, did you see anything between him and the end zone? Not much. No. Not nothing. much. If he could have kept it off the wall and, and, and stayed in bounds, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's one thing. He might have been thinking a little bit ahead, but a great job to get over there in position. The other thing that I saw in that play was Brock Long stepping back, and his, his head was just on a swivel, trying to watch to see where Derek Bernard was at. Snap back now, second down and 10. Pass to the right-hand side. This is high and hot. And it goes right through the hands of Javon Bell, who was up against the wall. Again, Kendrick Harper in there on coverage, and he's just shaking his head. No, 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 at Javon Bell as they both walk back to the line of scrimmage. It's hard to imagine when you look at this if you didn't know that two starters from that defensive backfield aren't here tonight. Yeah. And losing a third when you count Jake Latimer up front, who went out of this game with an injury. Here comes Long on the blitz. A pass out to Phillips and Tantre Matthews again, just being extremely physical, takes him down at the 10 yard line. Boy, Dietre, since that suspension that he got in the middle of the season, that lit his fuse, and he is playing just lights out. He's physical on his tackles, he finishes the play, and he has been very, very good on the back end of some of these passing plays. Now, Omaha looking to go for it here on fourth down. It's a fourth and six. Maybe a desperation play here from Omaha after missing that last field goal. They're down by 20 as we're in the last minute of the third quarter. Bernard sends two receivers in motion, three on the right-hand side. He's going to tuck it and run. Close to the first down yardage, hit from behind. Still running, and a flag is going to fly back in the offensive backfield where Travis Taylor was sitting down, and a hold will be called on Omaha. Yeah, it looks like Terrell Johnson potentially is going to be called for holding. And you are correct, Brian. Holding on the left tackle for the Omaha beef. So now a big fourth down. Coming up as we start the fourth quarter after the break. No timeout as we are at the end of three and a decision to make here for Omaha. What are they going to do on a fourth and long when we come back? It's fourth and 15 as we start the fourth quarter. That's coming up next. Salina leads it 47 to 27 right here on KINA. Come for Heating. this past winter or brings you fresh vegetables from their garden each year. Each week, we'll give away one of Robbie's famous cheesecakes to say thank you to your nominee. It's the Good Neighbor Award on Salina Post with the company that cares, comfort, heating, and air. You can rely on the company that cares where comfort, heating, and air. Hill, hillside. Riverfest is this week in Salina, and you're going to need ice. This week, when you buy a case of your favorite beverage at a Hillside Liquor, you get a free bag of ice. Lots of non-glass options for Riverfest and free ice. Just one of the many ways we're trying to show our amazing customers how much we appreciate them. Hillside Liquor at the corner of Ohio and Crawford by McDonald's. Hillside Liquor. 21 means 21. You're listening to Champions Indoor Football on KINA. Let's go. Back here as we get ready to start fourth quarter action, Devin Haney, Brian Berner, and that was a third quarter owned by the Salina Liberty. And Brian, I harken back to the pregame conversation I had with Ron O'Neill because we talked about the big victory that they had over Omaha two weeks ago. But it seemed to me, and I asked him about the third quarter because it was a field goal battle of the third quarter, nine to three, I think, was the was the point scores advantage of, of Omaha. 
And I just, I told him, I said, do you feel like the third quarter could have gone either way and that game could have gone either way if somebody would have stepped up and made more plays in the third? And he absolutely agreed with me. He said, yeah, I think the third quarter kind of determined how that game was going to work out. Well, here we are on the road at Ralston now, the third quarter in this game, absolutely owned by the Salina Liberty after leading at halftime when they went into the locker room 34 to 27. Liberty owned the third, 13 to nothing. That's a great third quarter. So now being up 47, 27, situation is this. If you can come in, win this fourth quarter, you walk away, Northern Division champions, with an opportunity next Saturday to potentially have the outright for the uh, for the wig for the playoffs. But uh, can't get ahead of ourselves because anything can happen in this indoor game and no lead is ever safe. Couple scores to pass along in the fourth quarter. Sioux City is down at Enid. They lead the Flying Aces 48 34. And in the third quarter, down at Wichita, it's Amarillo with a big 64 35 lead over the force. When we check in now, Omaha, after the penalty, backed up. And they will bring Arvalo onto the field. He had just missed a field goal from about the same distance. They're going to put this one down at the 17-yard line. So this one a little bit longer than the one he just missed late in the third. Yeah, and, and look how, how Salina is kind of set up. they got D-Train back. They've got uh, the three D back. So not going after a block. They're looking potential fake. You know, as you mentioned earlier, kind of watch everything. Don't let them get to that first down spot. Harper, Green. And also Anthony Jones in the midfield area. And the kick is no good off to the right-hand side as Aravalo misses another one. Dontre Matthews back deep didn't have to do anything but just watch it miss off to the right-hand side. So the Liberty will get the football back, leading by 20. 14.56 left to go as we're just underway here in the fourth quarter. We've been here a lot of times. Do you remember hearing this building in the fourth quarter is quiet? I don't even hear any of those annoying cowbells. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, again, these these are great fans. They appreciate oh, I love it. good football. But uh, so, so credit to Salina and to their defense and their offense to be able to really take the crowd out of the picture here. Tracy Brooks to the left hip of Andrew Jackson. They stand at the goal line as they get ready here for a first down after the missed field goal. Brooks in a pile of bodies, rolling out, just crossing the line of scrimmage at the five. He was led that time by Isaiah Trussell. Also out there trying to peel a block was Kelvin McCoy, but they gain a half a yard, and it will bring up second down. Is it too early to stop and think? Omaha's got to try to create that big play to get that ball back as quickly as possible. Down by 20 points. Well, and as you said, I just... I'm always really apprehensive about putting these games away so early just because we've seen five minutes and had five touchdowns before. I mean, it's just, it, that's what makes this game so much fun. Three receivers in motion on the left-hand side, and it's going to be a procedure of penalty here on Salina. They're going to go down the field, an incomplete pass, but one of the receivers, at least one, was offsides, and that flag lying down at the line of scrimmage here. Yeah, it looked like Ed Smith was, was the one that... Uh will be called for being offside. He was one of the two receivers in motion, just kind of looped through a little bit quicker. Wow. Illegal defense, the call. And as you said, not only this building, the quiet is most, one of the quietest times I've ever heard it, but people are also hitting the aisles too and going to the parking lot which yeah. I think that's a little premature. Yeah. I, I did not see that call. You know, generally, we're able to see a lot of the illegal defenses, especially from the vantage point we're here. I, I clearly thought Salina was offsides. Two receivers on the left-hand side. One of them at the line of scrimmage and Daniel McKinney for a total of three. Here's Brooks, pitch out. And he'll peel it all the way to the 15-yard line and a first down after the penalty for the Salina Liberty. So they're going to get a new set of downs here and continue to run offense with 13-30 left to play in this game. 47-27, the Salina lead. That's take. 
first place in the North Division and a title in the Northern Division for the second consecutive year for the Liberty. With that comes a playoff home game in the first round. So not only do you clinch a playoff spot, and a lot of people thought that Salina was a lock after their win against Wichita. That's not the case. They could still miss the playoffs coming into this game. There's Brooks. Again, going to the left, not much there, and a flag in the offensive backfield. You and I talked about this scenario. If Salina went 0-2 in their last two, and Sioux City went 2-0, Salina would be the odd man out. Yeah, let's not think about that. Holding against Salina. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, a lot of things up in the air. You know, Sioux City's in a little bit tougher game than we would have thought. Why is the clock stop here? Yeah, they're going to wind it. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not either. Clock setting at 13.04. Even after a penalty, I thought yes. the clock should, should be running. Should be running, yeah. And now it starts going. Down the field, Andrew Jackson had Ed Smith wide open at midfield at the 25, and he overthrew it. Boy, Andrew's shaking his head there. He knows he missed one on that play yeah. to Ed Smith. Ed, Ed was wide open, and, and it's rare to see Andrew kind of overthrow somebody by that much. Second down and 18 now after the incomplete pass. It's Ed great. Smith goes to a knee to tie those laces. Yeah, it's crazy as it sounds, but Andrew does overthrow a guy that deep. It's generally on purpose. All four receivers this time on the right-hand side. Two of them are stacked. Tracy Brooks, bubble screen at the 10. Cuts it back to the middle. He's at the 15-20. Loses the football again, but it pops right back into his hands, and he will be taken down at the 24. Boy, Tracy Brooks has a case of the dropsies here in this game. I've never seen him play like that. Like I said, coming into this game, he only has one fumble all year long. And we have an Omaha Beef player back at the 11-yard line who's down. Not sure what happened here, Brian. Did you catch it? I was watching the football yeah, I'm, play yeah, by Tracy Brooks. Yeah, I'm not Brooks. sure. It's Robert, uh, Robert Cuba, defensive lineman. I don't know what the trainer did, but... Uh, Seemed to work magic. Worked magic got him up immediately. He will have to go off the field onto the bench, at least for one play, because the training staff did come out onto the field. Now they'll get the clock wound up. So that Tracy Brooks run after catch brought it all the way out to the 24 yard line. Two guys in motion right hand side, fake pitch to Brooks. Jackson still backpedaling all the way to the 12. Now he unloads it to Tracy and Brooks drops it. Probably not a bad play that Brooks could not hang on to that football because he would have had it for a two yard loss behind the line of scrimmage. And now it's going to be fourth down and one. I mean, he could have got the first down, don't get me wrong, but two Omaha players bearing down on him, and now it's going to be fourth and less than a yard. And again, give credit to that offensive line to be able to hold their opponents off for as long as they did to give Jackson time to at least look. His checks downfield weren't there. Coverage was good. He went to the last possible resort. And again, it, Probably best that the ball did go out of bounds. Solana going for it here on fourth and short. It's going to be Andrew Jackson across the 25 and a first down. Move the chains as Salina keeps possession of this football, and the clock continues to run. Now inside, 11 minutes left to go, and across the midfield stripe was Andrew Jackson behind center, Kelvin McCoy. So that's one thing. You know, how often do you really practice with Jackson being right up under center? Not something you see very often with this uh, with this defense or in the indoor game, period. To quote Kelvin McCoy from last week, don't sleep on the big guys. That's right. <laughs> that is right. He was able to get enough space there for Jackson to follow him right through for that two-yard gain and a first down. Two receivers in motion, left-hand side, pitch out to Brooks. He has a crease. 20, 15, flags all over the place. Tracy shaking tackles off of the 10 and then diving to the one but there's a flag down at the 25 a flag down at the 19 this may be a bad block against one of the receivers for Salina 
whatever it is, the officials agree on the spot that it happened. So the penalty will have occurred at the 22-yard line. Holding against Rashad Fargo. Well, this will back the Salina up. The good thing about these penalties in this drive, Brian, is when Salina gets them, they're on first down. They have time to recover. Yeah, first down and it, you know, basically it's just going to keep the clock running. So that's time that, that Omaha doesn't get back. And down by 20 points, Omaha... They need possession of that ball one way or another. Bubble screen out to Daniel McKinney. McKinney let dancing behind his blockers. Omaha trying to strip that football. McKinney has it in his left hand. And McKinney will take it to the 20, now to the 19 before he's brought down. That's the spot there. And Isaiah Trussell over to help up Daniel McKinney. It looked like five of the eight B players were right there around McKinney trying to bring him down. So the nose of the football now at the 19-yard line. As McKinney gets back some of the penalty yardage, a penalty worth 10. He got back five of it. 9.39 left to go. Second down and 15 for the Liberty. Two receivers on the left-hand side, Smith and Pargo in motion. They're going to hand it off Tracy Brooks. He'll follow those receivers. Diving over to the left-hand side, another flag comes in. As Tracy takes it to the 24-yard line, and all of a sudden, this game is littered with penalties. Another hold. Another hold on Salina. Well, you can hear the contact of that far wall over there. This one's going to go against Isaiah Trussell on that offensive line. So Salina backed up again. Second down at 26. Yeah, the play clock's down to, you know, was down to about uh, 18, 19 seconds before they started the play clock, so... Two receivers in motion, one on each side. It's a screen pass out of the backfield to Brooks. Tracy in behind his blockers. He's going to bring it out again. A big pile up next to the wall. And Tracy Brooks will be spotted at the 18-yard line at the end of that play. So Salina getting some of that yardage back, trying to make third down more manageable. He's at third and about 20. 18. So an eight-yard gain on Second down by Tracy Brooks on that screen from Andrew Jackson. Now third down and 18. Jackson still talking to Veron O'Neill on the field. Play clock down to 10 as he enters the huddle. Looks like Veron O'Neill is going to call a timeout here. Not only a good time to avoid the delay of game, but also you're looking at a third and 18 here. That's probably a really good timeout by Coach O'Neill. Right. Yeah, I think it was definitely a good call. And, you know, if you're not sure of the play, having a tough time, Kind of getting that play in. And even though the crowd's not into it, you know, this arena staff's doing a good job. They keep that music pumped up, try to get a little false, uh, false sound coming in to make it difficult for the coach and quarterback. group of people here. You know, regardless of the score, this has been a it's been a fun game to watch. A lot of action. Great plays by both teams. It's just kind of unfolded though, like the first game. I mean it's been a shorter amount of time. But it's almost as if that when that Liberty defense decides that Omaha's not going to score anymore, they don't. Right now, it's the Liberty offense trying to make some things happen. Third down and long. Andrew Jackson fakes the handoff, and now he's going to be sandwiched between two beat defensive players. 
and Jackson goes down, and two of them, the beat players I'm referring to, run into each other, and they get up a little bit gimpy on that. Like one of them still down. Yep. He's had a rough night all night. That's been Kwame Bell. He's still down on a knee. He ran into his buddy, Robert Kuba, who has also been down at times tonight. Those two sandwiched Andrew Jackson. Andrew, I think, was fortunate to get out of that one unscathed. Yeah, that pocket just kind of collapsed on him. And, you know, he really did the smart thing. Don't risk throwing it away. Don't immediately give the ball back. That Jimmy Allen's going to be up. You know, last time he was in this distance in the third quarter, he tried to wind it out of bounds. We'll see if they give him a go. Back at the six. It's a 52-yard attempt, and Jimmy Allen's going for it. The kick curling. The kick is good. Jimmy Allen, on his birthday, makes a kick from back at his own six-yard line. And you can put that one in the tank as Jimmy Allen... Boy, he's got to be feeling good. Doesn't he have some buddies in town? He just made a big kick. His Michigan Wolverines won today here in Omaha in the College World Series. And he just puts a half a century on the board for the Salina Liberty 50 now to 27 over the Omaha Beef. And I guess with that, I owe it to him. Shout out to everybody at the Springfield Inn and Bar in Holly, Michigan. Hannah and Karen especially, two of his favorites. Jimmy, that was a kick. Absolutely. That placement of that football by Tracy Brooks was back at the six-yard line. It goes unofficially as a 52-yard kick, and he nailed it right down the middle. And, you know, that's the thing. Jimmy does not lack confidence. He feels he can get it. You know, it's, it is such a narrow target to go for. But he had that one played. He made the adjustments that he needed. And he got that thing down perfectly. So 50 to 27 increases the lead. You know, really, you look at those penalties. Did they come back? Did they hurt you? You know what? In my opinion, they kind of help because they help give you a few extra plays to take some time off that clock. It's still a three-possession game. That doesn't change. But now it's 23 points, and a couple of two-point conversions are going to have to be made in there for the Omaha Beef after their touchdowns if they're going to get back in this with 7.17 left to go. Well, and, and as Omaha, do you, how do you adjust your play calling? Because you can't have some of those long, sustained drives. You've got to get some points on the board pretty quickly, which means one thing. You're going to have to look for some of those passes downfield. Do you just kind of rush one? Like Salina did earlier, drop the majority of your team back in coverage. You know, a lot of things that Coach O'Neill has that he can, uh, you know, kind of play around with. Jimmy Allen now ready to kick it away. He's going to keep a low line drive. It bounces at the 10. It's taken back at about the five yard line by Omaha's Chris Perry. Perry hurdles over Brock Long at about the 14 yard line, and he's going to be spotted down between the 17 and 18 yard lines. Derek Bernard, it seems like it's been a while since we've seen his offense on the field, but they return now trailing 50 to 27 and they have zero points here in this second half flags down all the way back it looks like there's going to be a penalty on the kicking team they're going to tag this on to the return which will bring the ball across the midfield stripe and place it down at the 22 yard line so a short field here for the beat as Bernard will empty the backfield and have four wide receivers, two on each side. The slot guy's in motion. Slinging out to the left-hand side, it's going to be the Farquharson. He'll be close to a first down yardage, but about two yards shot. And Bernard, back in his own offensive backfield, slow to get up. And I'll see who made the hit for the Yeah, I, I didn't either. What a welcome tap. Right now, it's Dana Harris in the middle of that defensive line. Javier Dyer to his left. Travis Taylor to the right. Brock Long in their linebackers. Him and Naquan Thomas have been sharing time tonight. One running back in the backfield, Calvin Phillips. He's protecting for Bernard. Bernard swings it out to Parkour, sent along the right-hand wall. 
and he will be brought down by Kendrick Harper inside of the five yard line. Clock continuing to run, 6.08 left to go here, fourth quarter, 50 to 27 is our score. Omaha trailing, now moving it into the red zone at the four yard line. That time coverage is so far back. Parkerson was just wide open. Out on that right side. Easy pitch and catch. Again, Phillips in the backfield. Left hip, up Bernard. He'll take the handoff. Starts out right now, comes back left. Has to break a tackle, and he gets into the end zone. Winston Green complaining he was held, but the left-hand side of that offensive line for the Omaha Beef did a pretty good job keeping their guys at bay. And the Beef score their first touchdown of the second half with 5.42 left to play in the game. Looks like Derek Bernard will stay on here. They will go for two. up on the right hand side three wide receivers to the right Phillips in the backfield left hit Bernard good protection passes it it's going to be deflected and picked off Dontre Matthews here comes Dietre coming out of the end zone he's going to drag a receiver to about the six yard line and then they're going to stop him there forward progress and the whistle stopped and another turn of events here on an extra point for the Salina Liberty defense. Remember last week, Isaiah Barfield, actually two weeks ago, Isaiah Barfield against Omaha picked off a two-point conversion attempt, went the other way and got a point for it on the other side. This time it's Dontre Matthews doing the same. So the clock will continue, or it's actually stop here. 542 left to go in the fourth quarter, and the score will stay 50-33 to 33 in favor of the Liberty. A drive three plays. Six points. Now you're going to be in a situation I would anticipate you're going to see an onside kick or at least a line drive at somebody. So we'll see who Salina sends out on this front line. All their receivers. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Fargo, Matthew Craig, Anthony Jones, McKinney. Yep. Or Naquan Thomas up there. Travis Taylor. Tracy Brooks. Ed Smith. They're going to put Ed Smith now back deep, it looks like. There's a lot of uh, lot of empty space back here. Most of the Liberty players are standing at the 10 and then the 20. And after that, there's nothing. Yeah, the only thing that kind of concerns me is you do kind of throw it to a slot going to get run by here. The kick is going to go over everybody's head, bounce in the end zone, and then go over the wall where it's out of play, and that will have the Liberty starting here at the five-yard line. Yeah, honestly, that's a, that's a great play. Yeah. You know, on behalf of Salina, to be able to get that to go out, take it at the five, no contact, you don't risk anybody getting hurt, no flags. Salina Liberty will come out here with another drive. Five and a half minutes left to go. Those of the football sitting at the five-yard line. Yeah, most importantly, the clock is running. Ed Smith, Rashad Pargo come to the right-hand side. To the left, Daniel McKinney. Tracy Brooks will be in the backfield. Fake to Ed Smith. Jackson's going to keep it. Runs in behind Rashad Pargo and never has contact with the defensive player as Pargo was making the block and just kind of gives himself up, up against the wall after about a four-yard gain. Yeah, and Xander kind of started to come around that corner. He pointed to Rashad, hey, just block that guy. So Rashad was able to then turn around and get the block foot on, which allowed Andrew to kind of come up behind him and come in contact with the boards. 434 left to play. Second down and six. Ball sitting at the nine yard line. Brooks out wide as a wide receiver. They're going to give it to Pargo on the rush. Pargo taken down in the backfield and another great play by that defensive line for the Omaha Beef. And this was Kwame Bell. Actually, no, it was not. It was one of the newcomers, Corey Henry, a guy from Florida Atlantic, spent some time in the IFL. 
That's the first play we've seen him make of significance tonight. As we continue to watch that clock now, under four minutes, 355 and counting. Those that have stayed are not giving up. Play clock down to 10. Andrew Jackson now in the Liberty offense facing a third down and eight. Jackson, screen play out to Brooks. Omaha's defense all over it. And Brooks will take it out past the line of scrimmage, only getting two on the play. And that'll bring up now fourth down and six. Looks like we have an Omaha player slow to get up. And it is going to be Desmond Reed, the leading tackler on this team. It was slow to get up. So, call on Jimmy Allen once again. Well, and here's the thing. They've reset the play clock now to 40 seconds. So more time can now come off the board. It looks like Ron O'Neill may yeah. just let this one go all the way down and then take a timeout. There's still 24 seconds left on this clock. It's going to take it down to 224 on the game clock before Coach O'Neill has to burn that timeout. And that's exactly what he's going to do. And he's going to give Jimmy Allen and his kicking squad some time here to line this one up. And at 224, Coach O gets his timeout. Good use of the play clock. That will be Salinas second timeout taken here in the second half. They'll have one remaining. And probably, even though you don't move the ball a whole lot, you don't get a first down on that drive, you still took three plus minutes off the clock. You cut it in half. Yeah, you look at... Um, and you lead by three possessions still, too, by the way. Right, you, you've got the three possession. You've got Chris Perry that's going to be back deep. rather take the ball out of bounds give it to them at the 25 make their offense do something instead of giving them that chance for that possible return yeah the three points don't matter right now what matters is Omaha not taking the field goal after the touchdown on that last play they take the one they cut it to a two possession game but since they missed out on the two point conversion it's still a three possession game and that gives Salino the luxury here to pretty much do whatever they want with this football on the kick it is going to be placed down at the three-yard line. I think Jimmy wants to go for it. He may. Good snap. Tracy gets it down. The kick is going to angle off to the left-hand side. He plants this one in the fifth row. That's, I mean, that's a good... You know, I think he wanted it, but he's not going to be upset with that. Put the ball at the five-yard line. So, job well done by Jimmy Allen once again. He puts the Omaha offense back on their own five-yard line, trailing by 17. 219 left to go. Well, they went three plays in about a minute and a half last time they had the ball. So they'll start this at 217 and counting. There's really no sense of urgency in this huddle to get up and get a play going. And the clock is running. Under two minutes now left to go. Omaha in jeopardy of losing their third game in a row. And it's going to be nearly picked off. Dontre Matthews had a shot at another one. That one knocked out of the air. Intended receiver. Looks like maybe Javon Bell on that play. Yeah, at first is, is, uh, Bell is running that route. Like he and Matthews kind of tripped over each other. Good no call. And then Matthews had the chance for the interception. 121 left to go. Derek Bernard back to pass. Looks left now. Comes back right. And that one's dropped. Boy, Derek Bernard's receivers tonight have been him no favors, have they? They, they have. And we saw that in Salina, too. Remember, they dropped a couple of touchdowns in Salina. 
Yeah, a lot of the offense has really been Derek Bernard. That's, 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 that's interesting. Yeah. There's really no sense of urgency. They took a lot of time to get to the huddle, and now they call a timeout with a minute five to go, second down. So they'll get a play in, then the clock will stop again. They adjust it back to a minute eight, but they'll get a play in, take the one minute timeout. But still, uh, still a long way to go. And I would safely say this line is going to come away with the win. Again, it gives us a chance to just touch on where we're at right now in the climate of things. Remember, Omaha came into Salina two weeks ago with a 7-1 record. They walked away with a 20-point loss that night. Then they go to Amarillo Monday night. They lose again to the Venom. Then they come back here, play Salina again, and Salina completes the season sweep of the beef as it looks to be. So now Omaha went from being 7-1. and one. Now they're 7-4. and four. And if they lose in this building to the Sioux City Bandits next Saturday night, which Sioux City has owned in that series. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like the last 15 out of 17 games Sioux City has won. They've already beat them once this year. Omaha's not going to make the playoffs. There's a deep strike going down the right-hand side of the field, and it's going to be in the stands and out of bounds. So next week, basically does become a playoff game for Sioux City and Omaha. Winner in. Winner in. Loser out. And Meanwhile, right now. Oh, my. Maybe not. This could change. This is something we didn't expect to see coming. We don't know how much time is left. Tied 55-55. That's incredible. Oklahoma currently kicking off. It looks like there's under a minute left in that game. So Sioux City, with their weapon, Greg Connery, will have a chance to win this game as they will start to drive out the 14-yard line. That's down in Enid now with 44 seconds left. Meanwhile, Salina will have their second consecutive North Division championship here tonight after this game is over. One minute on the clock right now. We will not have a 60-second warning as we are back ready for play. And Salina has also clinched a home playoff game on June 29th, we will assume, in the first round of the playoffs. Snap back to Derek Bernard. Let's it go over the middle of the field. Has Farquhar sent for a first down. He makes the move, and now Naquan Thomas will bring him down at the 21-yard line. And the clock stops. Well, maybe it doesn't. It's still running. Should have stopped the clock to move the chains, and they didn't. Still running. Bernard back to pass. Travis Taylor coming in. And to the end zone, Tom Trey Matthews nearly made a one-handed interception. Boy, how good has he been tonight? He's, he's been fantastic. And, and to be able to get up there, kind of falling back, but uh, use his, his height and his athleticism to get up and bring that ball, knock it away. He's playing. You remember the Dontre Matthews that you kind of feared a little bit on the other side of the field when he wasn't on your team? Kind of that, kind of that game changer type guy that you had to stay away from? He's became that guy He's again back. here in Salina, hasn't he? His alter ego. Is back. <laughs> so the, I mean, the good thing about him is he's carrying that swagger, but he's staying away from those, those really those dumb penalties Absolutely. that he used to get. Bernard back to pass. Again, a three man rush, clean pocket. He throws this one out of bounds. Giving a souvenir to somebody. 30 seconds left to go in this one. So not only will Salina clinch a North Division title here in this game and a first-round home playoff game, they will go to Duke City next weekend, next Saturday night, and play to host both playoff games. They will face the top team in the South, and it could be a championship preview game, but also whoever wins that game will host the championship game if they make it there. So that will be huge, too, in that contest. Ron O'Neill loved the position his team was in coming into this game, a chance to earn everything right in front of them. All they had to do was win and get the job done. There's a little screen play out to Forkhorsen again. He drops the football as Travis Taylor hits Derek Bernard back in the 10-yard line. 
And the final timeout taken here by the Omaha Beef with 18 seconds left to go, still trailing by three possessions. We also want to give a little teaser too. Ron O'Neill, when he came into the Salina Liberty, this is his second season with the Liberty. Now, his second North Division Championship, and there's still loftier goals for this team. He's not leaving anytime soon. There's going to be more for that coming out in the next coming weeks, but Ron O'Neill has made a commitment not only to this team, but also to the Salina and surrounding area that he's not going anywhere anytime soon. He told us that before the game, so keep your eyes on the... Salina Post will have updates on that detail coming up this week. Last week, I asked Calvin McCoy who the best dancer was. Dana Harris was just, he, <laughs> he, he was putting on an exhibition during this uh, last stoppage of play. Fourth down and two now for the beef. 18 seconds left to go out of this timeout, their last one of the game. Three receivers on the right-hand side. They pass it behind and turn over on downs. Derek Bernard trying to get to Javon Bell, and it is incomplete, and the Liberty will take over. They'll just have to come out and finish this one off on offense as Dana Harris very cordially waving goodnight to all the fans hitting the aisles here at Ralston Arena. Henry Carper were the first guys over to give a quick hug to Coach Ron O'Neill. And coming up here, that was a big, big part of why Kendrick Harper came to this team. Yeah. And and he has helped, you know, really, his arrival. It's kind of when this team kind of started to turn things back in a good direction. Well, and you know, too, the value of him becomes even more evident when you have to play a game without Isaiah Barfield tonight. You know, you still have Kendrick Harper in there who's going to lock down one side of the field. You know that to be true. And he kind of got the floodgates open here in this game with an interception that led to the to the first Liberty touchdown of the night. Andrew Jackson will take a snap, a couple of steps back, and then take a knee, and that'll do it. The Salina Liberty here on the road have clinched a North Division championship 50-33 to over the Omaha Beef, and they will have a home game to start out first round of the playoffs. But before they do that, they will travel into Albuquerque to take on the Duke City Gladiators next Saturday night and a chance to earn home field advantage throughout the playoffs. 50 to 33, our final score. When we come back, we'll wrap it up from Ralston Arena in Omaha on KINA. Hey there, you got grass? I mean the green kind, partner. Outlaw Lawn Care will be right there when your grass needs a cut. Whether commercial or residential, Outlaw Lawn Care will treat you like family. Your yard gets that kind of treatment, too.